Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. Starting from Fabricating Weird Myths. Chapter 81. Take Stark, let's leave here now. Hawkeye breathed a sigh of relief. This experience was chilling and terrifying. But after all, we didn't fight any weird creatures here. The only one injured was Stark, who was too spiritual. Perhaps he saw the old gods through visions and fell into madness. I hope Stark can recover. It was not convenient for Hawkeye to hold the book in his hands, so he asked Rumlow to carry Stark on his back. Strange, how come your strength has increased so much? Daisy frowned. Unfortunately, this sentence was not heard by Hawkeye, who carefully guarded the Necronomicon. I've always been so strong. Rumlow snickered. Chen Feng put down the newspaper. Behind him, Hill, who was wearing a maid outfit, massaged Chen Feng's shoulders skillfully, soothing Chen Feng's tight muscles. She has adapted to this position. Boss, are you satisfied with my strength? Hill whispered in Chen Feng's ear. Don't stick it so close, it makes my ears uncomfortable. Chen Feng looked puzzled. Hill complained so much that he had to stay in bed. Why is it still missing? Chen Feng made a little movement. Jessica snorted coldly. Boss, I'll give you a leg kick. After saying that, he knelt down and kneaded Chen Feng's thighs. I'm coming too. Wanda joined the fight. The situation became increasingly chaotic. Boss, I'm coming too. Just as Quicksilver was about to come over, Chen Feng hit him on the head with a snap of his fingers. Don't be ridiculous, how can I do business with you like this? You don't have to do business, there are other things you can do. After Hill said this, he felt blushing. Jessica snorted coldly. What do you want to do? I am the veteran. I should be the first to hook up with the boss. There's no first come, first served basis for this, doesn't everyone have to do it according to their abilities? Hill grinned. Stop messing around, I'm going upstairs to take a rest, Hill, come and see the store. Hill proudly pouted at Jessica, looking arrogant. You. Jessica kicked the floor angrily. He followed Chen Feng upstairs, boss. Destiny Cafe is getting more and more lively. Chen Feng hired four people, which is enough to maintain the operation of the cafe. Plus Hill, who has administrative experience and can look after the cafe for him. The cafe is almost full. The only thing that gave Chen Feng some headaches was the three women in one scene. Sometimes being too handsome is a source of distress. Chen Feng sighed. The Nyarlathotep who appears in Exum is naturally not his true form. An existence like Nyarlathotep can be created by spending fear points. That is definitely a huge astronomical figure that Chen Feng cannot afford now. Chen Feng created only some phantoms. But the phantoms and duplications from Nyarlathotep are by no means ordinary things to ordinary people. But this is the world of American comics after all. American comic characters are much stronger than the human sanity in the Cthulhu world. Quote. Chen Feng frowned and said. Even so, Stark still regained consciousness after waking up, which I didn't expect. Chen Feng does not intend to drive Stark crazy, but he intends to convert Stark into a believer in Nyarlathotep. Natasha Romanoff has embraced Cthulhu, albeit voluntarily. Then let Stark turn around and fall into Nyarlathotep's arms. Everyone has their own beliefs. What a wonderful future this is. Chen Feng lamented. But Stark's spirit is still much stronger than I thought. Unless I create a real body, I may not be able to truly control Stark to become a believer. However, there is still an unexpected surprise. Quote. Chen Feng smiled. The unexpected surprise is Rumlow, the backbone of Hydra. Minister Pierce, Nick Fury's old boss, is not low in status. Secretary Pierce is also one of HYDRA's current leaders. In his hands, there is also Captain America's best friend Bucky. Is it because of my butterfly effect now? Why hasn't Hydra's Insight Project started yet? Chen Feng still wanted to watch the excitement. End, the strange incident of the rat in the wall. End the rat in the wall incident, obtain fear points, 1 million, obtain evaluation, s reward 100 weird points, obtain ability, none cannot obtain ability from phantom. 1 million fear points, which was unexpectedly rich by Chen Feng. There is no bonus ability from Nyarlathotep's shadow. Within Chen Feng's expectation. Otherwise, if hundreds of ghost brush abilities are created in one day, Chen Feng would be able to walk sideways in the Marvel Universe in just a few days. 
it costs an astronomical amount to create the true form of Nyarlathotep. Create an avatar, even Chen Feng who just received the reward. All the fear points are not enough. Although 1 million fear points sounds like a lot, in fact, it's only 100 weird points. Sure enough, the weird point is the real shortage. Currently, we are still 500 short of the 10th company. I still have to seize the opportunity to get the 10th company out. Quote. Chen Feng thought so. Shield who got the Necronomicon should have started translating it, right? I wonder if the translators will be shocked when they see the content above. Chen Feng thought interestingly and transferred his mind to the fragment of the Necronomicon placed in Shield. Sure enough, the people in Shield are having a headache now. In the forest, Logan seriously told the little wolf girl one thing. He told the little wolf girl everything in detail. You have to be stronger, everyone needs your protection. Logan's face was as gentle as water. After going through many struggles to escape, Logan's violent temper has long been smoothed away. What about you? What are you going to do? Little wolf girl said worriedly. Logan touched the little wolf girl's head but said nothing. After thinking for a while, he said, I will save everyone, you just wait for me. The little wolf girl was filled with uneasiness, and she saw death in Logan's eyes. Don't worry, Logan stood up, opened the door and walked out, I'll be right back. Dr. Rice sat on a simple bench, drank coffee and said with a smile, have you thought about it clearly? Logan. I've thought about it carefully. Logan's face was as gloomy as water. Dr. Rice showed a proud smile. Then just follow us and go where you should go. I'm afraid you misunderstood me, Logan sneered, I plan to ex your mom. Dr. Raya's face was gloomy, have you ever considered the consequences? I will kill all of you. You can give it a try. Logan sneered. Very good. Dr. Rice waved directly. The soldiers with loaded ammunition behind them immediately fired bullets at Logan. Although the adamantium bones in his body helped Logan resist most injuries. But there will still be some tricky bullets that penetrate the bones between adamantium's bones and pierce his internal organs. Now suppressed by the X-gene suppressor, the self-healing factors in Logan's body have lost their activity. Apart from the adamantium skeleton inside his body, Logan looks like an ordinary person. He was covered in blood, but his steps were still steady. There was some change in the, Da Qian Lu, behind it, and it seemed that it was not satisfied. Isn't it painful enough? Logan murmured. He remembered what the nameless mist said when he gave him the great Qinlu. The great lord said that only when I feel enough pain will Da Qian Lu come out of my body and let me use it. So what kind of pain and what degree will it take for me to use Da Qian Lu? Logan continued to move forward, the bullets exploding blood splashes on his body. Aren't you afraid of death? Or are you just here to seek death? Les snorted coldly. Then I will satisfy you. Increase the firepower and be sure to kill him. Clear. It is still too difficult for ordinary bullets to kill Logan. Those adamantium bones are like body armor and block most bullets. Every bullet brought pain to Logan. If he were an ordinary person, he would have lost the ability to resist when the first bullet was fired. But Logan kept moving forward. It doesn't hurt enough. It doesn't hurt enough. The rain of bullets rained down on Logan's body. Logan's body was like chaff. His body was swaying as if he was about to fall. Dr. Rice sneered. Even if Logan died, Dr. Rice could use Logan's adamantium skeleton and Logan's fresh self-healing factor to create a new Logan. Although the quality may not be as good as the current Logan. But it's enough for use. Dr. Rice looked at the struggling Logan with interest and felt wonderful in his heart. Mutant is about to be destroyed in my hands, and from now on I will be the only god who has mastered mutant. Does a guy like you deserve to be called a god? Logan sneered. He could feel the pain on his back. Da Qian Lu, has begun to become active. His clothes were pushed up by the, Da Qian Lu, that pierced his skin, and the bright red bamboo slips trembled like centipede legs. I have seen the real god. He has no desires and desires, standing on the azure sea composed of stars. In the sky are the blue sky and white clouds composed of chaos and kingming. Wherever he stands, you can feel the overwhelming and terrifying power. Now let you feel the power that God has given me. Quote. The strange bamboo slips that had crawled out of the skin crawled out of Logan's back like a centipede. 
Logan's back was dripping with blood as his self-healing ability had not yet been restored. What is that? Dr. Raya's eyes widened in surprise. What's going on? What is that? It exudes a magnificent and evil bright red, just like a ruby. It seemed like it was full of blood. The, Da Qian Lu, was spread out in front of Logan, and lines of text appeared in front of Logan. It was as if it was printed directly into Logan's mind, and he understood its meaning directly. Fly a hundred steps with your claws. Logan took out a dagger and cut his finger. The bloody nails were shaved off one after another. Fingers connected to the heart, there are no words to describe the pain. What's more, Logan's self-healing ability is temporarily unable to take effect. The severe pain forced Logan to bite his collar. He was afraid that he would bite his tongue because of the pain. Is he crazy? Dr. Rice watched in shock as Logan dug out the nails on his fingers one by one. Or did he know that he would die here today, so he made a crazy move. He said he had seen gods. Is that true or false? Lie. Dr. C was still thinking, but the nail that landed on the, Da Qian Lu, had already shot out. The ten fingernails were like arrows flying off the string, carrying bits of flesh as they flew towards the soldiers with loaded guns. Boom. Boom. Ten shots rang out in a row, instantly piercing through the soldiers wearing body armor. That's body armor designed to withstand automatic rifles. Facing ordinary nails, there is nothing to stop it. It penetrates instantly like tofu. What kind of ability is that? Les exclaimed. This kind of ability is too terrifying, but what frightens Rice more is not this special ability. But it was that weird red bamboo slip. Come on, catch him. His nails have been used up, let's see what he does now. Dr. Rice shouted, and the soldiers behind him immediately rushed towards Logan. Logan laughed ferociously, and his ten fingers were dripping with blood. He picked up the dagger and put it into his mouth Qian Li's. Boom. A tooth was spat out mixed with blood. Pull teeth and throw flying fire. The teeth that fell into the palm, still covered in blood, shot out faster. With the amazing tearing air sounds, it instantly penetrated several people. Nails, teeth, these are all bone parts of Logan's body that have not been replaced by adamantium. If it is adamantium, the lethality will be even more amazing. The soldiers did not dare to attack anymore. It's not because of how terrifying Logan's lethality is. It's because the way Logan fights is so weird. Imagine that you and your companions are fighting a human using firearms. But this human being can dig out his fingernails and pull out his teeth to use as weapons. And it is more powerful than ordinary firearms. Logan's face was ferocious, the dagger penetrated into his mouth again, and blood poured out of the corner of his mouth. Boom. Another tooth appeared in Logan's hand, but this time Logan was not in a hurry to use it. He looked at the others ferociously, teeth, nails. But my methods are more than that, do you want to try it? I have no grievances with you. I am only looking for Dr. Rice. If you leave, I will let you go, otherwise. The, Da Qian Lu, on the ground shook a bit, looking weird like a living thing. Such an evil nature is terrifying. I, I won't do it. The first weak-minded person dropped his weapon and ran away. Come back. Dr. Rice raised his gun and shouted in horror. How many teeth can he have? Kill him, kill him quickly. The bullet flew out, pierced Dr. Raya's palm, and the pistol fell to the ground. Les looked at the teeth behind him that were firmly nailed to the tree in horror. So who else? Logan put the dagger in his mouth again. Logan was covered in blood and his clothes were in tatters. Blood flowed from the mouth and wounds all over the body. Ordinary people's bodies may no longer be able to endure this kind of pain and injury. Even if he didn't die, he would probably have fainted from the pain. But Logan originally had self-healing ability. Experienced all kinds of unimaginable injuries. The tolerance for pain is beyond ordinary people. Logan put the dagger into his mouth, his face ferocious, like a ghost. The dagger was placed between the teeth. As long as Logan exerted a little force, he could pry the next tooth. No one dares to take a step forward. How can such a terrifying attack method still look like a human being? Come on. Just take away the bamboo slip in his hand. He will have no means of attack. Dr. Rice covered his arm and said in horror. As soon as that weird bamboo slip appeared, the situation immediately took a turn for the worse. 
although at present, the lethality is very limited. However, even the special forces dealing with mutant would feel intimidated by this horrific killing method. Logan's face was ferocious, and blood was pouring out of his wounds. He glanced around, and wherever he looked, the soldiers of the special forces retreated subconsciously. The way of using, Da Qian Lu, is really scary, Logan smiled bitterly in his heart, the pain was so severe. Even Logan felt dazed. I'm bleeding too much. I must find the X-gene suppressor as soon as possible and destroy that thing so that I can completely control the situation. Logan felt a sense of dizziness coming from his body, which was the negative effect that Mikado would have in the future. If this stalemate continues, then it won't be long before Logan faints. Then the children behind will have no one to protect them. Professor. The super ability will be unavailable for a long time until it recovers. Now Professor X is worse than an ordinary person. With the addition of the X gene suppressor, in addition to Logan who can now use Dakionlu. Those children and Professor X were just like ordinary people. Logan held a dagger in one hand and put it between his teeth. He held the, Da Qian Lu, in the other hand and walked towards Dr. Rice and others. When those people saw Logan approaching, they immediately stepped back nervously. Logan. You are so seriously injured now, but you are just holding on for 27, 3. This place has been surrounded by me, and there are heavy troops guarding it outside. Even if you can kill me. So what? You still can't escape, why don't you put down the weird bamboo slips in your hands? We can discuss it carefully and it is not impossible to let you and those children go. Quote. Dr. Rice said nervously. Logan looked murderous. He wanted to kill the people in front of him more than anyone else. However, when, Dakianlu, is used, it will not only increase the physical pain, but also drain Logan's energy. How many more times can I use my teeth? Logan didn't know the exact number, but his body was almost unable to bear it. Where is the X-gene suppressor? Logan did not answer Dr. Rice. He kept searching for where the X-gene suppressor might be. If you still can't find it. Logan took the dagger out of his mouth and placed it on his scalp. Then you can only use that move. Logan, do you want to die? Dr. Rice had no idea what Logan wanted to do. I don't know what effect Logan's move can have. But this did not prevent Dr. Rice and his subordinates from being frightened. Only after that weird and terrifying red bamboo slip emerged from Logan's body. They were greatly shocked. Flying nails, throwing teeth. Every attack is unexpected. When the nails and teeth that were still filled with flesh and blood flew out. That kind of weird attack method not only caused terrible physical destruction. It will also make these battle-hardened mutant special forces feel intimidated. Get away, Logan's dagger was already pressed against his scalp. This dagger is just ordinary steel and has been used a few times. It was already dull, which meant Logan wanted to cut open his own skin. It will be more painful and difficult. But correspondingly, the terrifying abilities recorded in, Da Qian Lu, will also cause greater harm. If it weren't for this moment, then Logan would have to think carefully before using this ability. Dr. Rice breathed a sigh of relief. Logan still had a soft spot in his heart and didn't dare or want to fight to the death. Retreat. Dr. Rice, CIBJ, said quickly, and he could feel that the soldiers around him breathed a sigh of relief. This kind of morale can be imagined if Dr. Rice continues to force them to fight. Maybe these soldiers would give up the fight and run away. Dr. Rice had given the order, and these soldiers fled the battlefield as fast as they could. This weird ability is really incredible. I have seen many special abilities of mutants, and their abilities are all kinds of weird. There's even a guy who can control poop. But this is the first time I have seen such a weird and terrifying ability. The self-healing factor in Wolverine has not taken effect, which means that the X-gene suppressor has not failed. The ability Wolverine used to fight just now did not come from himself. But it came from the strange bamboo slips that suddenly came out of his body. Quote. Dr. Rice was already in the car leaving, and his wounds were bandaged. But the fear in my heart still lingers no matter what. Where did that bamboo slip come from? How did Wolverine get it? Dr. Rice was filled with confusion. Suddenly Dr. Rice thought of something. Wolverine said that he had seen real gods. Could it be that the terrible bamboo slips came from the gods that Logan had seen? 
Dr. Rice felt a chill running down his spine, and his body began to tremble with fear. What kind of God would grant such a terrifying ability to its believers? Cutting out armor. Pulling out teeth. This may be just the most basic ability on the red bamboo slips. How many other abilities can Logan use? When he put the dagger on his head and cut it, did he want to activate another ability? How was it activated? Could it be? Dr. Rice thinks he has lost humanity, but he still can't do it to himself. When using, Dakianlu, to activate ability, if you want to hurt others, you must first hurt yourself. This is the case with the two most basic abilities. One needs to dig out his nails, and the other needs to pull out his teeth. Based on this premise, when Wolverine wants to activate the third ability, put the dagger on your head, and to activate the ability you want to hurt yourself. It's obvious what Wolverine wants to do. He wanted to make an incision in his scalp. He wants to peel off his own skin. Evil God. That must be an evil and terrifying God. Dr. Rice said tremblingly. Speed up, press the accelerator to the floor and let's get out of this place. Look at the helicopter and jeep that have left. Logan breathed a sigh of relief after the X-gene suppressor was gone. Logan's self-healing ability begins to recover, under the influence of the self-healing factor. Those physical wounds began to heal quickly. But the, Da Qian Lu, ability wound was activated. Nail and tooth wounds. When nails and teeth are just about to grow. Logan felt an indescribable amount of pain. That was huge amounts of pain than having his fingernails dug out and his teeth driven out. The severe pain made Logan want to put his fingers on the rocks and scratch them. Scratch the newly grown nails again. It seems that he realizes that he is no longer needed. Dakianlu on the ground crawled like a centipede again. In the unforgettable pain of Logan, he penetrated into Logan's body again. The bamboo slips stretched out inside Logan's body, fitting tightly to Logan's spine. Finally, the intense pain disappeared after the nails and teeth were fully grown. At this time, Logan's body was wet with blood and sweat. Blood dripped from the wet clothes, staining the ground red. The people watching were frightened. Logan stood up. The nameless fog, the power given by the great master is indeed extraordinary. But the side effects of using, Dakianlu, are too painful, and I can't imagine how much pain it will take to use the ability later. What is the origin of the god who created, the great thousand records? It's possible to torture humans to this extent. Quote. Logan gasped, although he had regained his super ability. But the lost blood and physical energy still take a certain amount of time to recover. Within a moment, Logan was energetic again. The children hiding in the wooden house listened to Logan's words obediently, and no children raised their heads to see the battle scene between Logan and those people. Except for Wolf Girl and Professor X. Logan. Professor. He already knew what Logan was hiding. I also know why Logan always subconsciously touches his back. No one knows that there is such a terrible creature in their back. I'm afraid I won't be able to resist touching you for a long time, right? Professor X has already regarded, Da Qian Lu, as a terrifying creature. I'm fine. Logan smiled, even though he felt infinite pain when using ability. But now that no one in his important family was harmed, Logan feels that his comeback was worth it. Logan did not bear the huge amounts of pain that would make ordinary people collapse in vain. Don't use that ability casually in the future. Professor X finally said. It's too dangerous. I understand. Logan was still frightened by the pain he had gone through when his nails and teeth grew back. It just makes people want to go crazy. The little wolf girl threw herself into Logan's arms with tears in her eyes. Although she didn't say a word, she made Logan feel the warmth of her family. His relationship with Little Wolf Girl is like that of father and daughter. More kids hugged Logan. Logan showed a happy smile. It's okay, everyone pack up and bow. We're going to change places to live. Quote. Yeah. The children have already adapted to this wandering life and have become numb. Didn't say much at all. You go too. Logan touched the Little Wolf Girl's head. Wait until the Little Wolf Girl also leaves. Logan said seriously to Professor. Are you alone enough? Professor X sighed. That's too dangerous, the children still need you. That's enough. Logan pointed to his back and said to Professor X seriously. I still have this, although the cost is a bit high, but if I can get rid of them once and for all. 
we don't have to hide here and there anymore. Quote. But we have no way of knowing where Raya's institute is located. Moreover, you and I don't know the origins of the forces that support Rice. Logan interrupted Professor X and said, I have other information channels, please don't worry. I will come back safely, but until then, the children will have to rely on you to take care of them, Professor. Quote. Professor. After Professor X muttered something self-deprecatingly, he looked at Logan. I know that after you make a decision, you must put it into practice, but please make sure you come back safely. I can't lose my family again, and my children can't lose you. Quote. God will protect me. Logan said with a smile, even though he knew it. In the eyes of the nameless fog, the value of his life is the same as that of ants, sparrows or even germs, and has no importance. But now, Logan's excuse can comfort his family. Go ahead, Logan. Make sure you come back safe. Stark was still unconscious. But no life support equipment is needed. Stark was like a human being in a deep sleep. His physical condition was stable and no maintenance equipment was needed. His brain is also normal. I don't find anything abnormal in Mr. Stark. Strange, the top neurosurgeon in New York and the future Sorcerer Supreme, came to the Stark building after receiving a high medical fee from Stark Industries. Stark Industries has not yet announced to the outside world that Stark has fallen into a coma. Because of this, a large part of the high medical fees Strange received were confidentiality fees. Strange knows very well that, if such big news as Stark's coma is thrown into the stock market, what a huge shock it will cause to the entire stock market. Is there really nothing wrong? Pepper looked at Stark worriedly, then why doesn't Stark wake up? Perhaps Mr. Stark encountered a great stimulus before passing out. Strange frowned and said, but what kind of thing could scare Stark? who once rushed towards Chidori with mushroom eggs, into this state. Wool and cloth. Strange was very curious. Could send Tony Stark into a coma. There are three possibilities, one is external force. One possibility is that he suffers from some kind of neurological disease, which can be ruled out. Stark is very healthy. He is not physically suffering from any kind of disease. One is strong mental stimulation. Although there was a trauma on Stark's neck. But it's not serious, and it shouldn't cause a faint that lasts that long. The other is strong mental stimulation. But what exactly could excite the Iron Man who flew towards Chidori with the mushroom eggs? This makes Strange very curious, but it is destined to be just a secret. After realizing that even the top neurosurgeons in New York and the world could not diagnose the cause of Stark's coma. Xiao Zhao's face was full of disappointment. In the past few days, she had already contacted several seniors in the medical field. S.H.I.E.L.D. also sent many well-known doctors to consult Stark. But the results were unsatisfactory. Stark is still in a coma, and there is no way to wake him up. Can I come in? Hawkeye's voice came. Please come in. Little Pepper said with a forced smile, hello. Hawkeye held flowers in his hand and looked at Stark, who was still unconscious on the hospital bed. Infinite guilt could not help but arise in my heart. Sorry, this is my responsibility. It doesn't matter, this is what Stark wants to go to. Pepper obviously wanted to ask something else, but was limited by the fact that Strange was still here, so she didn't say anything. Mr. Strange, please excuse me. Can you go out for a moment? Definitely. Although Strange was also curious about what happened to Stark to make him like this. But adhering to the doctor's ethics, Strange still walked out of the door and waited outside. What happened to Stark? Pepper asked in a low voice, he just told me that he wanted to go on a mission with his old colleagues from S.H.I.E.L.D. But it turned out like this after I came back. I need an explanation. Quote. Hawkeye frowned and smiled bitterly. Believe me, it's better that you don't know the truth of the matter. Answer me, Hawkeye, if you think of me as Stark's wife. Pepper frowned. After Stark defeated AIM Corporation and foiled Killian's conspiracy to use extremists to control the world. Stark and Pepper have officially confirmed their relationship and are about to get married. At this moment, Stark had an accident. How could this not make Pepper sad? But Hawkeye still looked at Pepper without saying a word. Get out. Pepper pointed to the door. Now she didn't want anything to do with S.H.I.E.L.D. Hawkeye sighed. Please don't worry, we are looking for a way to wake Mr. Stark up. But this will take some time. Quote. 
After returning to SHIELD's headquarters, Hawkeye immediately sent Stark to the hospital. At that time, Stark's vital signs were stable and there were no abnormalities. Hawkeye thought he had struck too hard, so Stark would be unconscious for a longer time. But unexpectedly, Stark never woke up again. Even though his vital signs were normal, he still showed no signs of waking up. This made Hawkeye wonder if what Stark saw in his vision was too terrifying. The terrifying and mysterious image overwhelmed Stark's sanity. So Stark isn't awake yet. The current shield has no way to cope with such a mental shock. But the good thing is. They found the Necronomicon. Although it is not the original version, it is an unknown edition of the Necronomicon that has been translated. A lot of information has been lost, but SHIELD's information base can still be expanded through the Necronomicon. At least this will stop them from being ignorant when facing the old gods. And in the Necronomicon, there might be a way to awaken Stark. But translating the Necronomicon was not as easy as imagined. This ancient Greek text used in the Necronomicon is crafted from weird leather. If you want to translate it into modern words, it will take quite a lot of effort. If you want to translate the content correctly, the translator must be an authority in the academic field. It's not a job that ordinary people can do. Nick Fury is looking for these types of people and trying to reach them. There are also many big shots in the academic world who are very interested in this ancient book in Nick Fury's hands. An ancient book that has never appeared in Greek history but was written in ancient Greek characters. Even if S.H.I.E.L.D. tries its best to cover up the news of the existence of the Necronomicon, it must contact the academic community who can translate the Necronomicon. Then those people with huge amounts of energy can learn about the existence of the Necronomicon from various channels. At present, this book has caused huge amounts of sensation in the area of ancient Greek literature and even history. Some people were even willing to help S.H.I.E.L.D. translate the Necronomicon for free. Nick Fury is currently in contact with those people personally. I believe that book will be translated soon. At that time, Stark would be able to wake up from his slumber. We can definitely bring Natasha Romanoff back. Hawkeye was filled with hope. Nick Fury looked at the Necronomicon in his hand. The obscure ancient characters on it gave Nick Fury a headache. Although I was mentally prepared for it, I still didn't expect this book to be so difficult to understand. Finding the right translator is not easy. The ancient Greek text on this has existed for a very long time and can be traced back to the Byzantine period. But this book is not the original version. The real, Necronomicon, was actually written much earlier. Nick Fury felt extremely helpless. His fear and curiosity about the unknown made Nick Fury feel flustered. What exactly is recorded in this book? To actually let the Delapore family do such a terrible thing. Quote. Through the action report submitted by Hawkeye, Nick Fury already knows the terrible truth about the Delapore family. Even the description through words is enough to make Nick Fury feel scared. I finally got the Necronomicon, but in order to deal with those terrible and ancient beings. The current shield is not enough, I have to find a way to recruit some talents from outside. Quote. Nick Fury already has several candidates in his mind, but Nick Fury hasn't started yet and is waiting for the translation of, the Necronomicon. Director, the time you agreed to meet with the scholar has come. Shall we leave now? Go now. Nick Fury was impatient, he no longer wanted to wait. The knowledge in the Necronomicon, which is full of secrets of the old gods and dark secrets that cannot be told, fills Nick Fury with desire. He wanted to know all the secrets of the Necronomicon. Walking out of the office, Dr. William Dale was taking a walk outside. Most of the survivors who came back alive from Innsmouth have been sent to orphanages. Only Dr. William Dale, the bartender in Innsmouth Tavern. He's still inside S.H.I.E.L.D. Most of his requests were granted, and he was allowed to roam the S.H.I.E.L.D. base. But William Dale was not allowed to leave S.H.I.E.L.D. Unless, he tells Nick Fury his past secret. Otherwise, he cannot be free. But William Dell is not in a hurry at all. We have obtained the Necronomicon, maybe you have heard its name. Nick Fury waved his hand. William Dell deadpanned and simply repeated, You're going to regret it, Nick Fury. You will regret that you came into contact with this forbidden knowledge. You are now in danger without knowing it. This will bring destruction upon you. Quote. Nick Fury just chuckled. 
now that the Necronomicon has been translated, we are not completely ignorant when it comes to the gods of the past. At that time, even if there is no method to deal with the old gods in the books, we can also gradually explore a set of feasible solutions. Quote. William Dale shook his head and said, No, you don't understand at all. Where do you think this book came from? Was this book really written by a human? Nick Fury was stunned for a moment, but William Dale did not continue to speak. Turned and left. This guy always likes to pour cold water on people. After arousing my curiosity, I stopped talking. Quote. Nick Fury wanted to curse, but finally gave up the plan. Let's go. Nick Fury still had an appointment to attend and was not pestering William Dell. Minister Pierce frowned and looked at Rumlow who came to report to him. So, you didn't get a copy of the Necronomicon. Rumlow nodded and said disapprovingly, that's right. The blackness in his eyes flashed away. You actually have the nerve to say, Rumlow, are you no longer loyal to Hydra? Minister Pierce did not notice the strangeness in Rumlow's body and said coldly. Don't you know who you are fighting for? Minister Pierce, you are a little too anxious. Although I did not get a copy of the Necronomicon, I did find something more interesting. Rumlow had a playful smile on his face, Dear Secretary Pierce. What is it? Minister Pierce asked suspiciously. Faith. Rumlow's pupils were instantly occupied by black thoughts, and his teeth and skin instantly turned as dark as ashes. Minister Pierce responded quickly to such a strange change. He immediately pulled out the gun from his pocket and exclaimed in surprise, What did you do? I didn't do anything, the great being chose me. Hydra selected. Rumlow tilted his head and looked at Pierce. Minister Pierce, Hydra needs a real leader, someone who can lead the entire Hydra. The gods also need the same, so that they can be interesting to the gods. Boredom is more deadly than anything else. Quote. The Baron doesn't think so. Pierce immediately pulled the trigger. The trigger was damaged the moment Pierre pulled it. Is this? Pierce asked in shock. The pistol in his hand and the glue machine disappeared. The great being needs no spokesman other than myself, Minister Pierce. More black gushes out. Rumlow's teeth also turned extremely black. The gun in Pierce's hand became hot, like melting steel. The terrifying pressure made Pierce freeze in place. He could feel that there was another life in Rumlow's body. An incomplete law, a terrifying creature that is still gestating. What the hell is that? Pierre. C. couldn't confirm it, but he could feel the astonishing terror. Dark, ancient, full of curses and blasphemous power. Boundless chaos echoes in the universe. Rumlow stretched out a hand, and his smile revealed teeth as black as ink, and even his gums turned pure black. Pierce, you can show your loyalty to me. Our Lord will also grant you supreme glory. Quote. What is God's purpose? Pierce said in horror, his body shaking like chaff. Rumlow squinted his eyes slightly and seemed to be thinking seriously. After a while, Rumlow smiled and said, fighting crickets. Pierce. His mind was full of doubts, even though it was now filled with fear. Pierce's surprise could not be concealed. Fighting crickets. He has no affection for us. Our existence is nothing more than a plaything for his pleasure. Quote. Rumlow said this, observing Pierce's reaction curiously. The gods gave Rumlow power. Is letting Rumlow control Hydra just for the fun of fighting crickets? Pierce's emotions were mixed. Nothing could be more ironic than this. During his long tenure, Pierce used his authority to wildly install Hydra people in S.H.I.E.L.D. Finally turning S.H.I.E.L.D. into the Hydra agency. However, this level of conspiracy is seen by the gods who gave Rumlow the power. Just a piece of material for fun. Rumlow held out his hand. Minister Pierce, what are your options? If that doesn't work, I can also use some special means. However, there is so much Hydra in S.H.I.E.L.D. I only know the tip of the iceberg, so after you die. I'll eat your brain to get the information I want. But that would be too unkind. After all, you were my boss before and you still took a lot of care of me. What do you say? Secretary Pierce. Quote. Cold sweat formed on Pierce's forehead. The help button on the desktop was within easy reach, but Pierce didn't dare to think about it. He said he was waiting for me to make a choice. If my choice was incorrect, he would kill me and eat my brain. Is there some way he can prevent me from asking for help? Minister Pierce could feel a layer of sweat forming on his palms. 
After stowing the Necronomicon in a trusty suitcase, Nick Fury headed to his appointment. In a coffee shop in New York, a well-dressed old man is waiting. His energetic appearance makes him look full of energy. Hello. Nick Fury put the suitcase on the table straight to the point. This is the ancient book, and we need someone to translate the contents as soon as possible. Come in and don't miss anything. Quote. A book that has never appeared in history is really curious. The old man's name is Hobbes, and he is an expert in ancient Greek literature. He is also a master of ancient writing. The only pity is that this old man is not free. There are too many people here, but I can provide you with some pictures I took. If you can translate it, I can hand this book to you with confidence. Quote. Nick Fury took out his mobile phone and handed the photos he took to Hobbes. Hobbes took the phone and looked attentively. He also murmured to himself, I didn't expect that after living so long, I could still find a book that has never been recorded before. Hobbes looked at the mobile phone in his hand and took out a notebook to record various words on it. Suddenly Hobbes' face became increasingly ugly. Looking at Nick Fury was like eating a fly. Where did you find this thing? Oh my god. Did you translate it? Nick Fury said happily. The photos he took were just taken casually, so Nick Fury didn't know what the words recorded. No, no. Hobbes quickly tore off the paper he recorded, 543, and quickly tore it into pieces. I didn't translate anything. Nick Fury frowned and said, Why did you react like this, Hobbes? What exactly did you translate? Tell me. Quote. No, no, Hobbes stood up from his chair in panic. I don't, I didn't translate anything. He was so panicked that he stumbled to his feet and almost fell to the ground. I haven't translated anything. Hobbes looked pitiful. Just like Nick Fury is a bully who bullies good people, and Hobbes is an honest person who is bullied and exploited. Hobbes, Nick Fury said in a deep voice. At this point, Nick Fury could only reveal part of the information. Although I don't know what is recorded in this book, I also know clearly how terrifying the contents in this book are. I can tell you seriously and responsibly that most of the things recorded here are true. We need the content above to deal with those unknown and terrible dangers. Only by obtaining the above content can we have a certain understanding of those dangers. Rather than knowing nothing. Hobbes, we need your help. This is no child's play. No, you don't understand, you don't understand at all. Hobbes looked pale. The content on this should not appear in the world, you should burn it. Not even a piece of paper should be left in the world. Hobbes looked at the suitcase tightly guarded by Nick Fury, and Nick Fury might have revealed a flaw. Hobbes would immediately snatch the box and burn it to ashes. But we need him. The gods recorded on this are being resurrected on Earth one by one. Can you understand how terrible it is? Human civilization may be destroyed because of this. Dr. Hobbes, please think carefully. The fate of mankind is now in your hands. Nick Fury looked at Hobbes sincerely and pleaded. Hobbes was silent, his face still pale. The body shook like chaff. This doesn't just make Nick Fury curious. What exactly was recorded in the pictures he took actually asked an experienced ancient Greek researcher. Terrified like this. You know, Hobbes is an expert in the field of ancient Greek literature and even global ancient writing. It is a giant in the industry. The knowledge and anecdotes he knows, as well as the dangerous deeds he has personally experienced. That's what you can find in the industry. Hobbes was not a peaceful man. In his early years, he had trouble with his students and friends. Adventure around the world in search of legendary treasures. This is the Marvel world, and anything is possible. Legendary treasures from around the world. Antiques with magical abilities are real. To be able to live to this day, it can be said that I have never seen strong winds and waves. But even now Hobbes has experienced great storms. Just saw a photo that belonged to a fragment of the Necronomicon. He was so frightened that he turned pale, and even hoped that Nick Fury could immediately burn the Necronomicon that he had finally obtained with great difficulty. I beg you to tell me what's on it. Nick Fury's heart started beating, maybe he wanted to translate the Necronomicon. Still need to find a professional. Go to the owner of Destiny Cafe. But this, Necronomicon, has so much content, so how much does it cost? Nick Fury's heart aches. That was all his hard-earned family fortune. No, I can't tell you, absolutely not. Hobbes murmured and stood up. 
Don't you want to know the rest of the content in that book? Nick Fury said solemnly, someone like Hobbes. Curiosity is very important. Nick Fury tries to use this to make Hobbes realize something. But it was beyond Nick Fury's expectations. Hobbes actually smiled in relief and said, Sometimes ignorance is a kind of happiness, I hope you can understand. I am already very old, and maybe I will die soon. Before I die, I better not know about such cruel things, what do you think? Hobbes stopped talking to Nick Fury because he was almost at the door. In short, I advise you not to find anyone to translate that book again. If possible, it would be better for the book to be burned. Quote. What on earth did you see? Nick Fury felt that everyone around him was against him. What the hell are you talking about? You should tell me. Nick Fury scratched his scalp dejectedly. Hobbes is the top person in the industry, you can't even find him. I'm afraid it's even worse for others. Now go to Destiny Cafe. Find Chen Feng. In several consultations, Chen Feng emphasized that S.H.I.E.L.D. should not seek uses for the undead. But S.H.I.E.L.D. still didn't listen to Chen Feng's suggestion and went to find the Necronomicon. Then will Chen Feng turn against others and stop helping S.H.I.E.L.D.? In that case, S.H.I.E.L.D. will lose its only information channel. I don't know what's going on with Hill now. Chen Feng sounds like the name of a person from the Dragon Kingdom, where people attach great importance to family. If Hill is pregnant with his child, Chen Feng may be able to provide more information. Quote. Nick Fury is planning to trick his subordinates again. On the other side, Hawkeye didn't rest either. After leaving the Stark building, I thought of the mysterious decadent old man. That old man must have many secrets hidden in him, and he should also know the secrets in the ancient house. Hawkeye thought. But he is unwilling to tell us. Is the truth really as simple as he said? The great mother goddess, the great mother goddess. Magnamat. Hawkeye suddenly remembered something and stood up excitedly. Walking back and forth across the room. There is no mistake, the raving that Rumlow heard when the old man was drunk was Magna Mart. Exactly the same name. Maybe the old man also entered the secret room in the basement. He also heard that name. He must know more, I should have brought him to shield that day. Quote. But it's still too late. It doesn't take long to drive Quinn Jet to that town. As the deputy director of S.H.I.E.L.D., on the surface, there is no need to report Hawkeye's actions to others. Hawkeye directly drove the Quinjet back to Exum Abbey. He wanted to find the old man. Nick Fury is holding the suitcase containing the Necronomicon in his hand. He has arrived in Hell's Kitchen, and in front of him is Chen Feng's cafe. Ahem, there's no other way. Nick Fury sighed. After Hobbes abandoned translation, Nick Fury asked a few more people who had been willing to help with translations. But these people's reaction to seeing the photo was even stronger than Hobbes's reaction. One of them, after seeing the picture provided by Nick Fury. After just translating a few sentences, I was frightened and fainted. If Nick Fury hadn't been carrying his ID, he would have been taken to the station to rest. Now no one is willing to provide translation for Nick Fury. However, there are many people who do not believe in evil and want to see with their own eyes the Necronomicon, which can scare those academic masters into fainting. Without exception, all these people returned home defeated. Even if he wasn't stunned, he was almost there. Now there is only one person Nick Fury can think of. That is Chen Feng. Chen Feng knows the history of the Necronomicon and even knows who the author of the book, the Necronomicon, is. It should also be possible to translate the contents of the Necronomicon, but Nick Fury's face turned pale when he thought of the sky-high translation fees that Chen Feng might charge. I hope he'll can be more helpful and maybe get a discount. Nick Fury sighed and pushed the door open. Welcome. Hill, who is watching business at the bar, had a smile on his face. The maid outfit she wears is quite cute. Nick Fury sighed. Director, why are you here? Do you want to drink coffee? Hill quickly returned to his normal smile. Hill's boss is now Chen Feng. Have a drink, I need caffeine. Nick Fury sighed, where's Chen Feng? Still resting upstairs. Hill took a cup of ordinary coffee from the coffee machine and handed it to Nick Fury. Thank you, so will this store be managed by you now? Nick Fury was secretly happy. It seems that Hill still has two skills. Now Chen Feng can leave the store to Hill. Are you two together? Nick Fury made a suggestive gesture. 
Hill blushed and said, not yet, I'm still working hard. Chen Feng is not as womanly as I thought. Nick Fury looked puzzled. Huh. There are three girls here, and I have no advantage in terms of appearance or figure. Besides, the other two girls are also interesting to the boss, so the competition is too fierce. If I can arrange for a few people to cooperate with me, maybe I still have a chance. Quote. Three role beauties, doesn't Chen Feng like western beauties? Nick Fury rubbed his chin. Yes. Then arrange an oriental beauty. You must occupy Chen Feng's bed. Who is this? Chen Feng had already known that Nick Fury had arrived. In Destiny Cafe, everything is invisible to Chen Feng. Including, Chen Feng heard everything Nick Fury said just now. Think of Nick Fury's doubts. Chen Feng couldn't help but rolled his eyes. A good man should focus on his career. Beauty will only affect the speed at which I draw the sword. However, what is intolerable is unbearable. Chen Feng looked at Hill. She must know how powerful she is. Chen Feng also knows that both Wanda and Jessica are interested in him. But three at the same time is troublesome. But in that case, wouldn't I not have to pay wages? Chen Feng restrained his messy thoughts. Smiling and shaking hands with Nick Fury. Hill smiled and said, Boss, this is my former boss. Hash. Hello, Chen Feng. Thank you for the information you provided on 5.7. It helped us reduce a lot of losses. Nick Fury smiled. Are you here specifically to thank me? No, you're just collecting people's money to do things for them. This is just business. Quote. Chen Feng said. In addition to thanking Mr. Chen Feng for coming here this time, I have one more thing I want Mr. Dong to help me with. After that, Nick Fury opened the suitcase, which contained an ancient book. Made of unknown leather material. It exudes an aura of chaos and evil. Necronomicon, Chen Feng said with an unhappy expression, I remember I told you many times. Don't look for the Necronomicon. Please forgive me, but without the Necronomicon, how can we understand those terrible existences? Humanity could disappear from the entire universe without knowing anything about it. For the continuation of humanity, we must master the secrets of the Necronomicon. Nick Fury said impassionedly. Chen Feng seemed to be a little moved. So why did you come to me? I would like to ask you to help translate this book. Nick Fury said seriously. I am willing to provide you with translation fees of 10 million United States dollars, 20 million United States dollars. I am willing to provide you with translation fees of 20 million United States dollars. 20 million, which almost empties SHIELD's regular budget for a quarter. Special budgets such as aerospace aircraft carriers are not included. You can get 20 million United States dollars for translating a book. This is undoubtedly an astronomical sum. Nick Fury is sincere and looking forward to watching Chen Feng. I was even praying in my heart that Chen Feng could accept the 20 million United States dollars. I can't promise you. Chen Feng shook his head decisively and rejected Nick Fury's conditions. The contents of the Necronomicon must not appear in this world. Absolutely not. Please go back. Chen Feng's decisive attitude was beyond Nick Fury's expectations. 20 million is enough to tempt almost everyone on the planet. That's 20 million United States dollars. Mr. Chen, this matter is related to the life and death of mankind. As long as you are willing to promise me, I will directly deposit 20 million United States dollars into your account. Not a penny less. Nick Fury wants to try again. If Mr. Chen thinks it is less, please give us a number. This has nothing to do with money. Chen Feng sighed, this book contains knowledge that should not be understood by humans. It records horrific secrets that could destroy the entire human civilization. Quote. Those secrets have been revived, but humans know nothing about them. If we can know the secret of this book, maybe we can still struggle. Nick Fury said seriously, he was eagerly looking forward to Chen Feng agreeing to him. As long as you are willing to translate the content above, I will offer you 1 million USD for one page. The Necronomicon is made of a special material, so it looks like a very thick book. There are not many pages in it. But even so, there are hundreds of pages in the Necronomicon. Calculated based on 100 pictures, that's 200 pages. That's 200 million United States dollars. 
it has doubled ten times, not to mention that the Necronomicon definitely contains more than 200 pages. Nick Fury waited for Chen Feng's answer with an expectant look on his face. Please, Mr. Chen. After paying 200 million United States dollars and still begging the other party to accept it, this attitude still made the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. personally take action. It can be said that it gave Chen Feng enough face. Chen Feng looked embarrassed and sighed, Okay, I can help you translate. But you can only translate the less harmful things above, and remember not to spread any content to others. Not a single character is allowed. Quote. Nick Fury said happily, Thank you, Mr. Chen. No matter how much content you translate, I will transfer 200 million United States dollars to you now. 200 million dollars almost emptied S.H.I.E.L.D.'s finances. And made Nick Fury grovel. But even so, Nick Fury feels it is very worthwhile. As long as you can get the contents of the Necronomicon, everything is worth it. Want to have a cup of coffee? Chen Feng smiled and said, I'll treat you. A cup of coffee priced at $28 in the store makes Nick Fury feel mixed. Chen Feng knows so many secrets about the old days. It really makes people curious. What does he do? So curious about Chen Feng. It is naturally impossible for Nick Fury not to arrange for people to collect information about Chen Feng. However, many searches proved in vain. Nick Fury spent a lot of money and manpower but could not find any information about Chen Feng. There are no criminal certificates, green cards, passports, or even credit card consumption records. It was as if Chen Feng suddenly appeared in this world. Chen Feng's age may be much more than how young he looks. He must have used some kind of power that I don't know to erase his past. Quote. Nick Fury became more and more surprised when he thought of this possibility. After finishing a cup of coffee, Nick Fury could not calm down. Mr. Chen, I will leave the Necronomicon here and leave first. I will leave the translation to you. The money will be transferred to your account immediately after I go back. Quote. Chen Feng nodded. You go back, I will contact you after I finish the translation. Nick Fury left gratefully. I said, Chen Feng looked at Hill with a smile on his face, but Hill's heart began to beat. Did you secretly say bad things about me just now? Hill lowered her head with a guilty conscience and did not dare to look at Chen Feng, even though as an agent, she knew that the success rate of lying like this was not high. But in front of Chen Feng, he still couldn't help but act like a little girl. No, no, no. Chen Feng chuckled, I still want to prove it to you. Really, really. Nick Fury walked to the Destiny Cafe and lit a cigarette for himself, carefully pondering Chen Feng's words in his mind. Chen Feng said, sort out some less dangerous content in it, which means that there probably is no non-dangerous content in it. I hope the information I want to know can be selected by Chen Feng. Nick Fury is completely passive. Chen Feng can give Nick Fury whatever information he wants. And Nick Fury doesn't get to choose. The initiative is entirely in Chen Feng's hands. Even after Nick Fury transfers all 200 million United States dollars into Chen Feng's account, Chen Feng can still choose not to translate the remaining content. Although I have never seen Chen Feng fight, I think that Chen Feng's fighting ability may be comparable to Captain Marvel. The most powerful hero Nick Fury has ever seen is Captain Marvel subconsciously linking Chen Feng and Captain Marvel. Since Chen Feng may not like Western beauties, then. Nick Fury thought carefully. It seems that Daisy is the only one in the bureau. Unfortunately, Daisy is not Nick Fury's core subordinate. Otherwise Nick Fury would have sent Daisy out without any hesitation. Asgard, Ancient One carefully flips through the books in Asgard's vault. Through the power of the time gem, the Ancient One quickly read the books in the entire treasure house at a speed that no one else could understand. And Odin and Thor stood waiting. As time passed by, Ji Yi finally stopped. From the perspective of the outside world, only 10 minutes have passed. But with the blessing of time gem, Ancient One has read through the vast library. The Ancient One magician is becoming more and more skilled in using time gem. I wonder if the Ancient One magician has found what he wanted to find. Odin said. No, Ancient One said with some regret. Thor frowned and said, The Asgard treasure house is the largest treasure house in the Nine Realms. The books collected here record countless secrets. How could it be possible that you don't have what you want? 
But it's true, I won't lie. The Ancient One sighed. Odin waved his hand to interrupt Thor's words, and asked with curiosity and a little surprise. I would like to ask, Ancient One Magician, what kind of creature did you see? It actually surprised the Sorcerer Supreme to this extent. It's a very terrifying creature, and I don't need to describe its size. But just being close to him caused confusion in my memory and errors in my cognition. If the protection technique I set up in my brain hadn't worked, perhaps my memory would have been completely tampered with or deleted. Ancient One was a little scared when he thought about the situation at that time. When I had questions about his name, a voice appeared in my mind. I don't know if it came from his voice or from a higher level existence, but what I am sure of is that its name is Ananda Shesha. Odin fell into silence. As the king of Asgard and a member of the Protoss, Odin's lifespan is longer than before. He knows even more secrets. But I have never heard the name Ananda Shesha. Anyway, thank you for your help. I'm going back to Earth. Ananda Shesha appeared on the Earth for the first time, but it is likely to appear again for the second and third times. After Ananda Shesha appears again, maybe I can try to contact him again. So said the Ancient One. Odin frowned and said, if you find something, please tell me. His, baby, daughter, Hela, the goddess of death, may have been sealed on earth by Odin. In case some strange changes occur, Hela, the goddess of death, can break free from Odin's seal in advance. That would be great fun. I can feel that some wonderful changes are happening on the earth. Time Gem's ability to peek into the future is blocked. Ancient One pondered. The high probability is not a good thing. Earth. Thor thought, I do have some like-minded friends on Earth. As you watch, my fellow Chidori friends are with me. Since you said that, I think I should go back to Earth to see if any accidents have happened to my friends. Quote. Father, please approve my actions. Thor looked at Odin. Now that Bifrost is destroyed, if you want to travel through the Nine Realms, you must use the Space Gem. And the Space Gem is now in Odin's hands. Go and check for changes in the Earth. Odin approved Thor's action, and he was very strange in his heart, why didn't Heimdall inform me of the changes from the Earth? Heimdall is the gatekeeper of Bifrost. He has a pair of extremely special eyes that can perceive and observe all things. Standing in Asgard, he can use those eyes to see abnormalities in the Nine Realms. In the past, if Heimdall noticed something unusual, Odin will be notified immediately. But until now, Heimdall has not informed Odin that he saw anything strange in the Nine Realms. Either Heimdall didn't notice anything unusual about Midgard. Or else. Not good. Odin's expression tightened. Go to Bifrost quickly, Ancient One Magician, please go with us. Odin looked nervous. Although Ancient One didn't know what Odin meant, he still nodded. Thor was a little confused and said nothing. Follow Odin and the three of them to the ruins of Bifrost. Although Bifrost has lost its function, it has not been repaired yet. But Heimdall is still doing his duty here, using his divine eyes to spy on the Nine Realms. But precisely because of this, Heimdall saw something that made his soul tremble. Upon arriving in Bifrost, Odin immediately discovered the gatekeeper god of Asgard. Heimdall, clad in golden armor, was trembling. The sword in his hand trembled along with Heimdall's body. Quote dot 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 quote. Heimdall. Thor walked over quickly. Heimdall's eyes widened. Chaos, evil, unknown, no, 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 they woke up. Heimdall said a lot of irrelevant and unconnected words in a series. It was as if Heimdall was frightened and confused. Heimdall, what did you see? Odin said angrily. Something was wrong with his gatekeeper, and Odin didn't realize it until now. Odin waved Gingnur, and light like Bifrost shone out. Heimdall, shrouded in great fear, immediately fell into a coma. Send him to treatment, Odin said solemnly. He looked at the Ancient One. Magician, what happened on Earth? Heimdall is also my a famous warrior in guard. He was so scared that he looked like this. Quote. The Ancient One smiled bitterly. If I knew, I wouldn't come to Asgard to find the answer. Odin thought for a long time. Thor, you go to Midgard immediately. Find out what happened on Midgard and let me know. Quote. I understand, Father, Thor nodded. Ancient One Magician, please excuse me. Odin said. Ancient One nodded, spinning his hands to draw a portal in front of Bifrost. 
This portal is the ancient teleportation array from Kamar Taj. What is this? Thor frowned and asked in confusion. The portal, you can go directly to the earth through it, which is what you Asgard people call Midgard. The ancient one was no longer waiting for Thor to take the lead in entering the portal. Deliver the door. Go, Thor. With his father's guarantee, Thor stepped into the portal with confidence. The next moment the two were in Kamar Taj. Huh. My god, what is this? Thor's eyes widened in shock. Portal, my god, what is this? Thor repeated this several times before calming down. Asgardian magic is not the same as the magic system on Earth. The people of Asgard mainly improve the power in their bodies and use their own power to master the power of natural elements. And Kamar Taj, mainly loans. Both have their own merits, but in reality. Kamar Taj's magician's training speed and combat effectiveness are stronger than Asgard's magician. After all, one is a big boss lending money, and the other needs to work hard and train himself before he can become stronger. This is a spell. Ancient One felt relieved and, finally shocked this guy. After that, Ancient One drew another teleportation array. Let's go, I'll take you to New York. Well, okay. Thor felt a little numb. He had been shocked too much today. First, the magician suddenly appeared on Asgard Earth, and then Heimdall was frightened. Now the magicians on Earth can move back and forth among the Nine Realms without using Bifrost. This caused Thor's worldview to encounter a very serious challenge. It's too strong, it's really too strong. Now Thor is standing on the New York building, looking into the distance as the Avengers headquarters. Stark building. I'm going to see an old friend, so I'll say goodbye to you for the time being. Thor finally became more polite, and he was even more enthusiastic about learning Kamar Taj's magic. But I was rejected by Ancient One, just kidding. What if Odin knew that his son was coaxed into taking out a campus loan by the Ancient One? Then you have to fight the Ancient One. Rumlo picked up Pierce and opened his mouth. Rumlo's teeth and gums were no longer distinguishable from his tongue. Because everything in Rumlo's mouth was black. I, I am willing to serve him. Pierce said tremblingly. Very good, Rumlo dropped Pierce on the ground, and the blackness on his body quickly faded. Changed to normal skin color. Pierce, you will thank yourself for this decision. But first you have a mission, because the snakehead only needs one leader. Quote. Yes. Although Pierce agreed to Rumlo, he did not completely return to his heart. But Rumlo didn't care, after seeing the power of the Lord. No one can reject him. Nobody. You'd better give me the list of all Hydras in S.H.I.E.L.D. as agreed. After leaving these words, Rumlo left the office. Pierce looked gloomy and uncertain. What's going on? Why did this guy suddenly become like this? Otherwise, start the Winter Soldier project. The most famous of the Winter Soldiers is Winter Soldier Bucky, but Bucky is not the only Winter Soldier. No, it's too dangerous. Pierce thought about the plan. Perhaps this news can be revealed to Madam Hydra. Mrs. Hydra is also the Viper, and she is also only related to the God of Dor. Not that close though. That's all. It's best to let them fight until both sides lose. Nick Fury returns to S.H.I.E.L.D., where's Hawkeye? Daisy said. Hawkeye said he was back in the town, and there was an old man in the town. The same person who previously revealed information about Exum Abbey to us. Hawkeye said that maybe he could find a way to revive Stark from the old man. Stark. Nick Fury sighed, if he knew what would happen if he let Stark go. Then Nick Fury won't let Stark go. Stark has outstanding abilities and is currently a promoter of Earth's technology. At this time, Richard is the rubber man in the Fantastic Four and the future villain. It is still unknown. Every second that Stark slept was a loss. I have found Chen Feng and asked Chen Feng to translate the Necronomicon. I should soon be able to find a way to revive Stark. Nick Fury mused. Chen Feng. Daisy still remembered that she was acting with Hawkeye before setting off to Exum Abbey. Daisy had been deeply impressed by Chen Feng's handsome appearance 467 after going to Destiny Cafe. Maybe I should go drink coffee if I have a chance. I heard the coffee beans there are very good. Daisy licked her lips. Nick Fury was thinking about the plan and didn't notice Daisy's little move. By the way, how is Captain America doing now? The reply is very good. Dr. Zhao said that he can be discharged from the hospital in a few days. Daisy replied. 
Good, Nick Fury said, thinking of William Dale, the only survivor of the Antarctic expedition. They encountered Yog sothoth one of the three pillars of gods, in Antarctica. One has become a stupid person, and the other is William Dell, who clearly knows a lot. But they just don't want to tell them the information. I have to go to Antarctica myself. Nick Fury has already started preparing the things needed for the Antarctic expedition. If you can see Yog sothoth and gain some knowledge, then this trip will be a profitable one. But Yog sothoth is by no means an easy guy to get along with. Encountering him might bring disaster to the earth. Quote. Nick Fury was very troubled by this. An expedition trip to Antarctica, even for ordinary sightseeing, is extremely dangerous. Not to mention having anything to do with the old gods. Nick Fury at the moment didn't know the difference between the old gods and the outer gods. He only thought that the three pillar gods were the three most powerful old gods. Come with me to meet Captain America, Nick Fury said, having already made up his mind. To go to Antarctica, you must be well prepared this time. Daisy, Hawkeye, Captain America, in addition, Nick Fury also plans to go into battle himself. But in addition to this, Nick Fury also called a foreign aide. Not Captain Marvel, but Gia, daughter of Talos of the Skrulls. Ja, who inherited the Skrulls, super strength and self-healing ability, and also possesses shapeshifting ability. It is very suitable to participate in this operation. The only thing that needs to be worried is Gianna's immature mind. Will you go crazy if you encounter extreme terror? Nick Fury took a deep breath, he had to make such a decision. Didn't Daisy come here the same way? Came to Captain America's ward with Daisy. Steve's calf has been repaired a lot, and I believe it won't be long before it can be completely repaired. Dr. Zhao is carefully observing the cradle of life in operation. It will be fine soon. After it is completely repaired, you can regain your ability to exercise. Captain America's calf injury was too serious. In order to repair Captain America's leg. A special metal that is also rare in the Marvel world had to be used. Vibranium. But the effect is good. After the recovery, Captain America's combat effectiveness will be improved. Director, why are you here? Steve smiled. He was not depressed because of what happened in Innsmouth. That's not Steve's style. I'm very sorry to inform you of some bad news while you are still in the ward. Nick Fury pulled up a chair and said after doing it. What's going on? Steve noticed something was wrong with Nick Fury's mood. Stark fell into a coma during the last mission. He had an accident, said Nick Fury. After setting up the procedure, Dr. Zhao was taken away by Daisy. Stark, Steve said in disbelief, what the hell is going on? Why did Stark fall into a coma? Now Steve has not fallen out with Bucky and Stark, and they are still good friends. We still don't know the specific cause of Tony Stark's coma, but Stark is also valuable after he passes out. Nick Fury said seriously and regretfully. Stark fell into a coma during that mission. But although the Necronomicon we got is not the original version, it still has high value. I have asked Chen Feng to translate the book, and maybe I will soon be able to find a way to wake up Tony Stark. Steve nodded reassuringly and said reassuringly. If it's Mr. Chen Feng, there will be no problem. He knows a lot about the old god's message. Quote. But that's not why I came here today. After telling you about the current situation, I don't want to talk to you about some things. I have prepared a small team for an expedition to Antarctica. The identity of the bartender you brought out from Innsmouth is not simple. He was once a well-known geographer named William Dale, and he organized a scientific expedition to Antarctica with his students. But during that operation, except for him and one of his students, the entire team disappeared in the Antarctic continent. As for the whereabouts of the camp and other people, he was unwilling to tell the search and rescue personnel. His whereabouts are unknown, and his student turns into a madman. He is now being held in a mental hospital with no possibility of regaining consciousness. Although during my questioning, William Dale revealed some information and vaguely told me the fate of the Antarctic Scientific Expedition Team. But he also told me the name of a terrifying being. His name is Yog sothoth In any case, even if it is more dangerous, I think we must go there. This operation will be more dangerous than Innsmouth. Quote. Nick Fury looked at Captain America expectantly. 
I want you to participate, but the final decision still depends on your own wishes. I'm definitely willing. Steve nodded immediately and smiled. I can't move in bed these days, and I feel like all the muscles in my body are gone. You will not disappoint. Nick Fury breathed a sigh of relief. The opponent we faced in the past was Hydra. The opponent we face now is indeed an unknown and terrifying existence. We must grasp every possibility and be prepared to sacrifice in order to gain a little possibility of victory. So, Natasha Romanoff her. Steve's smile dimmed. Is there no hope that we can save him? We are still searching for traces of Natasha Romanoff, but the ocean is so big, and the deepest point is 10,000 meters. Even Mount Everest would not be able to fill it. So to little avail, but since those monsters need Natasha Romanoff. Then Natasha Romanoff should not be in any danger. Nick Fury reassured. Those monsters refer to Natasha Romanoff as Mother Goddess, and maybe Father Goddess. Steve had a bad thought in his mind, I hope Natasha Romanoff will be okay. You should have a good rest. There are still a few days before we set off. I can give you some time to recover your physical fitness. Nick Fury stood up and was about to leave when he saw Rumua walking in with flowers. Hey, director, are you here to visit Captain America too? Rumlo greeted warmly. Hello, Rumlo. Nick Fury smiled and greeted Rumlo before leaving. Rumlo puts the flowers into the vase. Hello Captain America. The two had collaborated on a ship hijacking case before, and they never met each other in S.H.I.E.L.D. So they can be considered friends. Long time no see, Rumlo. Steve felt that there was something wrong with Rumlo's temperament, but he couldn't tell what was wrong. What have you been busy with lately? It seems Nick director Nick Fury didn't tell you about the mission where Stark passed out. I'm part of it too. Quote. Rumlo peeled an apple and smiled. Do you like apples? Captain. No, thank you. Steve refused. Rumlo started eating without hesitation. To be honest, if you saw that scene. It might even collapse. Quote. What happened? Steve frowned, his curiosity already aroused. A family more terrifying than the half-breeds in Innsmouth, although they don't appear to be very dangerous on the surface. Except Stark was stunned. The rest of us didn't take any damage or even get through a decent fight. But I say, that place is much scarier than Innsmouth. Quote. Rumlo chewed the apple and showed an evil smile. There is a god hidden in that place. Nick Fury walked out of the ward and saw William Dale standing in front of the vending machine. Nick Fury curiously walked over and stood next to William Dale. William Dale stares at the snacks in the vending machine. Nick Fury from. He took out a coin from his pocket, stuffed it into the vending machine and bought a pack of Skittles. We were trapped by a heavy snowstorm. William Dale suddenly said. At that time, we had just arrived in Antarctica and were breaking through the ice to take samples. Many breakthroughs have been made. Just when we were filled with joy, a snowstorm came. An overwhelming snowstorm, believe me, even in Antarctica. Snowstorms like that are rare. Quote. Nick Fury held Skittles in his hand and looked at William Dale quietly. He was a little strange. He had been asking William Dale before. But William Dale did not tell him any information about the Antarctic Scientific Expedition Team. But now, when Nick Fury didn't ask. William Dale took the initiative to speak out. Our food was buried somewhere by the wind and snow, and what's even more terrible is that a high mountain appeared in front of us. Right in front of our eyes, he suddenly appeared. Just after the snowstorm, the mountain appeared in front of us out of thin air. Quote. William Dale said in an almost pleading tone. I beg you, don't try to find that place, just let it continue to be submerged in the wind and snow. 11. Nick Fury did not speak. He rejected the jelly beans from Skittles and made a click sound in his mouth as the jelly beans were chewed. What is hidden in that mountain? Nick Fury asked after a long time. An ancient secret, a hidden history. William Dale sighed. Nick Fury did not answer William Dale's question though. But he still showed his attitude, he would not give up going to Antarctica. If you must go, ask my students. He knows better. William Dale sighed. Your student. Nick Fury wondered, isn't he already crazy? What information can I get from asking him? When you are 500 years ahead of the world, you become a madman. Although his behavior is illogical and inconsistent with human common sense, it is a self-mature system. 
Over the past few decades, he has been trying to sort out the chaotic and complex knowledge network in the brain. If and when he sorts things out, maybe he will return to normal one day in the future. Quote. William Dale snatched the Skittles candy from Nick Fury's hand, stuffed it into his mouth, and directly introduced the whole bag of candy into his mouth to chew. Nick Fury smiled and said nothing. William Dell threw the garbage bag on the ground casually. Go ahead, with your network, it shouldn't be difficult to find him. Heimdall's situation is far more serious than imagined. Even with Asgard's superb medical technology, Heimdall was still in panic. Even Odin has no way to communicate normally with Heimdall. What did Heimdall see? This question quickly spread throughout Asgard, and the entire Asgard was surrounded by great fear. Heimdall is also an absolute powerhouse in the entire Asgard. But even this kind of existence was frightened like this after seeing the unknown. What happened to Midgard? Odin frowned. Odin's heart was full of uneasiness. He could feel that the huge divine power in his body was gradually losing control as his body decayed. Perhaps it won't be long before even the eye of Odin can't slow down this out of control speed. Then he will completely disappear into this world. And this day shouldn't be too far away. At that time, Hela will also break through the seal and return to Asgard. I can't die yet. I have to hold on until Thor grows into a true god king. Odin gave up his wild thoughts. Frigga asked with a smile that never changed, what happened? Although Odin did not tell Frigga about the changes in Asgard. But Frigga passed through Heimdall's coma and the unfolded protective shield. Knowing that Asgard must now be facing some kind of threat that cannot be told to others. Odin sighed, he was wearing golden armor, Gingnir never left his hand, and he was always ready for battle. Honestly, I don't know. You don't know. Frigga frowned, but unknown threats could alert God King Odin to this appearance. He even deployed a protective shield that had not been used for a long time. Yes, I'm afraid it will take Heimdall to regain consciousness before we can learn from his mouth what he saw. But what we know now is that this incident should be related to the incident on Midgard. Quote. Odin lowered his head and thought. The Ancient One magician noticed the changes in Midgard and came personally to check our collection of books. But he found nothing. The library of Kamar Taj almost records a history longer than the history of mankind. But there is still no description of the strange incident. I think Midgard has something to do with Heimdall's current situation. Quote. Is the same true for the Ancient One Magician? Frigga was a little surprised. The power of the Ancient One Magician was not inferior to that of leaving the factory. If the Ancient One is nervous, then Odin is understandably nervous. Yes, if that wasn't the case, why would she come to us? Odin said with a bitter smile. Our son, Thor, has gone to Midgard. I hope he and his friends can find out the anomaly that happened in Midgard. Speaking of this, Odin was full of confidence. Thor is quite reliable on some things, I think we can trust him. On the earth, Thor wielded the Meow Hammer, dark clouds rolled in the sky, and thunder roared. Ha ha ha, come on guys. Thor laughed, hugging his girlfriend, Jane Foster. After a big kiss, let me take you to the sky for a walk. Woohoo, fly. The old friend Thor is looking for is not Stark, nor is he an Avenger. But his girlfriend. It was obvious that Odin was going to be disappointed. But the good news is that Heimdall hasn't woken up yet, so no one can see Thor's grand party on Earth. At this moment, Nick Fury is still busy looking for news about Antarctica. Thor is in a state unknown to anyone, seeking pleasure on Earth. He urgently wants to know what happened in Antarctica. Only then did William Dale, a geologist, hide in Innsmouth and open a pub. And William Dale also provided some clues. One of his students. The crazy student seems to know more. But how do I get more information from a madman? Nick Fury was confused. But this is indeed one of the few clues provided by William Dale. Beep. There was a light buzz from Nick Fury's cell phone. That's a special notification sound when important messages are received. Nick Fury picked up his cell phone and smiled immediately after seeing the message. Great, it is indeed right to hand over the Necronomicon to Chen Feng. The message sent by the mobile phone was exactly a translation from the Book of the Dead. The translated content is not some obscure incantation, or a terrifying and frightening prophecy. It's just a brief encyclopedia-like description of a creature. And the name of this creature is the Ancient One. 
The Ancient One, Nick Fury felt a little uneasy. When William Dale was taken away from Innsmouth, William Dale recognized the Shagok. The names of the Ancient Ones are also mentioned. There may be some connection between the two that we don't understand. Could it be that what they saw in Antarctica were the Ancient Ones? Or something related to the Ancient Ones? Director. Daisy ran over panting, looking panicked. Although his reasoning was interrupted, Nick Fury felt a little unhappy. But seeing Daisy's panic, the uneasiness in Nick Fury's heart became even stronger. What's wrong? Daisy. Mr. William Dale is dead. What? Nick Fury stood up in surprise, what on earth is going on? William Dell holds many unknown secrets in his hands, even William Dell is unwilling to cooperate with S.H.I.E.L.D. He is also of great value. But such a person died on the territory of S.H.I.E.L.D. He made a rope out of sheets in his house. Daisy's words were not finished. But the proper meaning has been expressed. How could it be? Nick Fury lamented. But he left a letter and wanted to give it to you. Daisy took out a sealed letter. Judging from the complete seal, no one has read the letter yet. This is written in black pen. Yours sincerely, Dr. William Dale, Shield Nick Fury. Before Dr. William Dale died, he left some messages. It is also the last message in life. You go out. Nick Fury sighed, when his funeral is held, I will carry the coffin. Clear. After waiting for Daisy to leave, Nick Fury immediately turned on the shielding protection. Prevent all kinds of prying eyes from the outside world. When I opened the letter, it turned out to be a handwritten letter by William Dale. I spent the rest of my life in panic and trembling. This was my choice and I have no regrets. To me, the world is no longer that beautiful world of gentle wind, drizzle, and bright sun. The more beautiful the world is, the more devastating the madness and death hidden in the tranquility are. So I stayed in Innsmouth. In such a strange town, I felt at ease. Sorry, I can't tell you what's really going on in Antarctica. But it was definitely a horrific journey that no one would want to recall. I hope you will think carefully before deciding whether to embark on a crazy journey. Also, please send my belongings to my good friend Albert N. Wilmarth. He and I teach at the same university. Grateful. There is no valuable information in my heart. Just mentioning William Dale's good friend. Albert who taught at the same university as him. Nick Fury collected the letter, and the secret that had tortured William Dell his whole life was taken to his grave by William Dell. It seems that we can only go to the mental hospital to find William Dale's crazy student, but we don't even know its name now. Nick Fury looked at the letter in his hand, and an idea flashed in his mind. If Albert was a good friend of William Dale, maybe he also had some impressions of William Dale's Antarctic journey. If not, you can also find information about William Dell students from Albert. Miskatonic University, what a strange name. Nick Fury quickly opened the Controlled Shield Information Library. Search university information around the world. Unexpectedly, I discovered that Miskatonic University is in the United States. And although it is not well known, there are many big names in archaeology, geology, mysticism, and medicine at Miskatonic University. It has even reached the top level in the world. However, Miskatonic University's reputation is unexpectedly not great, and it can even be said to be extremely unpopular. This makes Miskatonic University cast a veil of mystery. Although there are many powerful characters coming out, why does this school have no sense of presence? Is it a special reason, or is this school doing it deliberately? And, Nick Fury looked at the majors offered by Miskatonic University. Occultism, although some schools are also conducting occult research, but none of those schools are like Miskatonic University. Putting mysticism in such a prominent position, more often than not, they regard mysticism as a sideline and unpopular subject. There must be something weird about this school. Quote. Nick Fury stood up and walked back and forth across the room. Whether it's for William Dale's will or for the mission. Miskatonic University is a must for all of us. Quote. What's even more surprising is that Miskatonic University is in the same state as Innsmouth. Although there is still some distance between them. But when these two places were put together, Nick Fury couldn't help but start to think of them together. Set out as soon as possible to find Albert. Let me see if that academy hides any secrets. Hawkeye reached the familiar mountain range, the chilling Exum Abbey on the hill. Hawkeye arrived at that town. 
He walked quickly down the Quinjet and towards the bar closest to him. He had no information about the mysterious old man. But because Rumlo followed him, Hawkeye knew that the old man liked to drink. Got such a big sum of money. It is conceivable that the old man will be free and unrestrained for a few days. Sure enough, I just entered the bar. Hawkeye saw the drunk old man at the bar. Hey, Hawkeye didn't know how to address the old man, so he simply stepped forward and called out. The drunken old man raised his head to look at Hawkeye, and actually waved familiarly. Are you a human or a ghost? Or are you a hallucination I saw when I was drunk? Don't bother me drinking. The old man raised his whiskey. That's a very cheap bottle of wine, probably less than 5 USD a bottle. For someone who only got 100,000 United States dollars. This is too shabby. What do you know? Hawkeye said solemnly. I don't know anything. The old man drank the whiskey in his glass. Oh, give me another drink and let me die of alcohol poisoning. The bartender glanced at Hawkeye and said, leave him alone, old Delapore can't drink anymore. Hawkeye felt like he was struck by lightning. He looked at the bartender in shock. What did you say his name was? The bartender wiped the wine glass in his hand and said calmly, old Delapore. 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 Hawkeye repeated the words in his mouth. The old man said he was a rat catcher. He is actually from the Delapore family. Hawkeye couldn't accept it and asked the bartender again, is it the one on the mountain? The bartender glanced at Hawkeye with a strange look on his face, but nodded anyway. The last orphan of the Delapore family is now this bad old man. Since he is a member of the Delapore family, he will follow the information he received before. The third son who killed everyone in his family with his own hands should be his ancestor. But why would he appear here? And become as decadent as he is now? Quote. Hawkeye was puzzled, but after Hawkeye told Exum Abbey. The bartender ignored Hawkeye. He turned his back and wiped the wine glass. Drunk-eyed old Delapore was lying on the bar. He had already fallen asleep, and there were only fragments of low murmurs coming out of his mouth. Give me wine, give me wine. Only alcohol can make me forget those images. Get away from him, you devil. No, 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 let him go. Old Delapore was having terrible nightmares, and his face was full of terror. But soon, the alcohol took effect. Old Delapore fell into a deep sleep. No more weird babbles. Hawkeye took out some slightly more bills from his pocket, placed them on the table and shouted, pay the bill. Then he helped old Delapore back to the Quinjet. What secret is hidden in him? How did the arrested third son leave any descendants? Why do those people whose expressions change drastically when he mentions the monastery? Why are they so familiar with him but don't have any thoughts of rejection? Question after question emerged in Hawkeye's mind. He really didn't know why his third son's descendants came back here after leaving Exum Abbey. Could it be that in that gloomy and terrifying old mansion? There is some terrifying existence, from the world beyond the starry sky, in the bottomless black abyss of terror. A call was made to the Delapore family. Let them return here and continue the terrible ancient rituals and rituals. Hawkeye flies the Quinjet, and the descendant of the Delapore family is lying in the cabin of the Quinjet. Thousands of thoughts were running through Hawkeye's mind, and he could only wait until old Delapore woke up to ask questions clearly. However, he was still drunk and showed no signs of waking up. Ding beep dong. The classic fruit phone ringtone rang, and Hawkeye picked up the phone. It was Nick Fury calling. After Hawkeye put Quinjet into autopilot mode, he immediately connected the phone. Hawkeye is back, we need you to complete a task. Nick Fury said. I'm on my way back, and I'm afraid you won't believe that a descendant of the Delapore family is actually in this town. And it's the old man who gave us clues. Quote. Hawkeye told Nick Fury the information he got. Nick Fury was quite surprised and said. I know, you brought him back first. Mr. William Dale is dead. What? Now it was Hawkeye's turn to be surprised, what's going on? Nick Fury sighed. It was his own choice, but he left some messages. His good friend also teaches at his university, and perhaps we can find some clues from his good friend. I hope you can take a team to Miskatonic University and maybe find out something about what happened to their Antarctic expedition team. Quote. Hawkeye said. I understand. One more thing, I need you to find someone. The information should also be found at Miskatonic University. 
It's that crazy student named William Dell, according to the tips Mr. William Dell left for me. That crazy student may have a lot of secret information. Got it, I'll be there on the 553rd. After hanging up the phone, Hawkeye immediately increased his speed and made sure to arrive as soon as possible. In Hell's Kitchen, nightlife has begun. After the three murderers disappeared, the night here became lively again. And the original night devil vigilante disappeared. There are rumors circulating that Daredevil was ambushed. The man had been captured by the kingpin. It may have been sunk to the bottom of the sea now and is being fed to fish in a trench. Again I advise others to be honest and not go against the kingpin. Chen Feng was dismissive of this. His store is open as usual, if anyone dares to come and cause trouble. Chen Feng didn't need to take action at all. A few of his clerks were enough to deal with those short-sighted guys. It was already midnight. The cafe is also closed. Now everyone lives in the Destiny Cafe. Including Hill. Do you know how powerful it is? Chen Feng drank his favorite tea leisurely. Hill was lying on the bed unable to stand up, although his body seemed to be falling apart. But Hill was happy. Got it, boss. Then why don't you go back to your room quickly? I'm going to bed. Chen Feng said mercilessly. Hill sadly left Chen Feng's room. But as long as you take the first step, you will definitely be able to win Chen Feng in the future. After all, Wanda and Jessica's progress is not as fast as mine. Sure enough, there are bonuses to being a secretary and agent. After Hill left, Chen Feng took out the Necronomicon. This book created by Chen Feng using fear points is not the original version. Many of the abilities on this are also unavailable. Because Chen Feng has not yet created the source of power required to perform magic in the Necronomicon. There is very little available at the moment. But the book is in Chen Feng's hands, and he only needs to pick out some of the things that have been made up and give them to Nick Fury. Reveal a little bit of information and let that suspicion and inference constantly amplify the fear in their hearts. When you finally see the real scene, you will be even more frightened. Just like when watching a horror movie, the scariest thing is often not when something spooky comes out. It's when you know that Dwayne is about to come out, but he hasn't come out yet. You are always paying attention to every corner of the movie when he suddenly appears. The fear reached its peak at that moment. Then it fell to the extreme. Only that kind of half coverage brings the atmosphere of fear and extreme depression to the extreme. It makes those plot characters constantly feel depressed and terrifying in their suspicion and reasoning. Only then could Chen Feng harvest a large number of fear points from the same person. That's why Chen Feng was able to filter out some contents from the Book of the Dead for Nick Fury. The ignorant are fearless. The omniscient has no fear. Half knowledge is the best state. Closing the books, Chen Feng selected some messages from the ancients and sent them to Nick Fury. It's been a long time since I played Lord of Dreams. I don't know how those people are doing. It's also time to bring some new members into the dreamland. Who should I choose? Chen Feng was thinking when he suddenly smiled and said, here comes a naughty little wild cat. The entire Destiny Cafe and Chen Feng can be said to be of one mind. When an uninvited guest appears in Destiny Cafe, Chen Feng can feel it immediately. Even if the other party is not in the Destiny Cafe. But Chen Feng can also perceive the gaze he casts at Destiny Cafe in the streets. As for high-level existences, let alone that. Bosses who have transcended too many levels are automatically blocked by Destiny Cafe. Outside Hell's Kitchen, a woman wearing a black tights that outlines her charming curves has climbed to the roof of the Destiny Cafe. Under the moonlight, that beautiful long silver white hair looks like the cold moonlight. An alluring lipstick that is as moisturizing as jelly. He wore a Zorro-like mask on his face, although his face was invisible. But you can also know that underneath that mask is a stunning beauty. The person coming is Felicia the Black Cat, the Catwoman, in Marvel. Her target is Destiny Cafe. The window is open, it's just what I want. With a charming smile on her face, Felicia walked through the window as nimbly as a house cat. It fell to the ground quietly without making any sound. It seems that Destiny Cafe is not as strong as Jin Bin's men boasted. Felicia glanced around. Chen Feng's room should be nearby. That book should also be placed in Chen Feng's room. As long as I find the book, I will leave with the book. You can complete the task. Very easy. Quote. 
Felicia touched the door and entered Chen Feng's house. All other rooms have been blocked by Chen Feng, so Wanda Quicksilver and others did not find Felicia. Found it. Felicia saw the, Necronomicon, Chen Feng put on the table at a glance. Before she even got it in her hand, Felicia showed a look of disgust. Just looking at it makes people feel creepy, but no one would have imagined that this book has already been sold for 1 billion USD on the black market. Since you didn't take good precautions, you can't blame me. Quote. With this thought in mind, Felicia tiptoed towards the desk where the Necronomicon was placed. Indeed, I never imagined that this book could be sold for 1 billion USD on the black market. The lights in the room were turned on. Chen Feng was sitting in the corner of the room drinking tea. He smiled. So, it attracted a little wild cat. Even though Chen Feng didn't show any hostility, Felicia still spread her fingers as if facing a formidable enemy. Unlike Catwoman, Felicia's main means of attack comes from cat-like retractable claws on her five fingers. He is as handsome as the rumors say. It's just a pity. Why are you awake? Felicia said with some annoyance, otherwise I couldn't sneak you away with me. Sure enough, he is as greedy as the rumors say. Don't you know the reputation of Destiny Cafe in Hell's Kitchen? Chen Feng was not in a hurry to take action against Felicia. As long as the other party comes to the Destiny Cafe, he will be no different from the turtle in the jar. That's 1 billion USD. Even if you go to Hell, you have to give it a try. Felicia raised her eyebrows and bit her lips lightly. How about selling it and sharing it equally between the two of us? You really are. Chen Feng smiled, not knowing what to say. Felicia took advantage of this opportunity and immediately rushed to the desk, picked up the Necronomicon and wanted to break open the window and jump out. Chen Feng drank tea leisurely. Then a muffled sound of, dong, was heard. Felicia fell to the ground with a big bump on her forehead. Fortunately, the shock-absorbing device was still good and there was no damage to the lungs. You installed bulletproof glass? Felicia asked in surprise. If you don't install bulletproof glass when doing business in Hell's Kitchen, do you look down on the street gangsters here? Chen Feng put down his teacup, so who paid for the Necronomicon on the black market? Why should I tell you? Felicia pouted. Just because you're handsome, I won't give in. Let me guess, is it the hand or the kingpin? Chen Feng was not surprised that the news about the Necronomicon was known to outsiders. After all, Nick Fury took the Necronomicon and searched for talents across the country who could translate the Necronomicon. Make this incident known to everyone. So it's not surprising that people like the Hand and the Kingpin, who had special access to information, knew about the Necronomicon. Organizations like Hydra should have known about the existence of the Necronomicon for a long time. How do you know? Felicia widened her eyes and said in surprise. Chen Feng walked towards Felicia and directly picked up the Necronomicon. It was this opportunity that Felicia was waiting for. Felicia used a triangle choke on Chen Feng almost instantly. This is a very dangerous move in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, enough to knock out an adult within a minute. If the force is sufficient, a few seconds will be enough. But how could Chen Feng's power be comparable to Felicia's? Chen Feng looked at Felicia with her legs wrapped around his neck in confusion, and his face turned red. My whole body was working hard. He said doubtfully, are you being too proactive? Thank you. I will not eat. Quote. After that, Chen Feng lifted Felicia up from his body like a cat. Felicia looked ashen and sighed, it's over. It's over this time. It fell into the hands of a greedy guy like you. I guess I'm dead. When did I become so greedy? Chen Feng frowned in confusion, for a young man like him. He is all about his career, what is creating rumors about him again? In addition to Hill provoking himself, Chen Feng has to prove it. At other times, Chen Feng is a good young man who focuses on his career. Then those maids of yours are all stunning. Are you keeping them by your side just so they can deliver coffee? What if? Chen Feng protested. Asked. Felicia was speechless, and after a long time she said, I have nothing to say, but please give me a happy answer, whether to kill her, you can give me an accurate answer. Wait a minute. Chen Feng put Felicia down, got up and went to the closet to rummage immediately. She took out a maid outfit with cat ears. From today on, you will be the fifth employee of Destiny Cafe. You must wear this cat-eared maid outfit for me. 
What if I don't want to? Felicia frowned. Chen Feng smiled and said, Since you said that I am greedy, then I'd better be that kind of person. Don't you agree? In the end, Felicia reluctantly became the fifth employee of Destiny Cafe. However, since Felicia did not join the job through formal channels, she received no salary. Now Chen Feng probably knows why the kingpin and the hand paid a high price to buy the undead. The surprise Chen Feng left on Lawyer Ma worked. Now the curse of the horror tape is being spread on a large scale among the hand. The people killed by Sadako could not use the power of the beast to resurrect. Because their souls have also become incomplete. As a member of the super primitive demon 0.8, beast has the power to protect most of the people in the hand. But Kingpin was miserable. He has only one way now, or join the hand. Otherwise, he would just watch his men being killed one by one by Sadako. But now, there is a new solution. That is to get the Necronomicon, and maybe we can find a solution from it. So Kingpin spent 1 billion USD to buy the Necronomicon on the black market. 1 billion USD is not a small number. Chen Feng felt that he could sell part of the incomplete Necronomicon to Jin Bin through Felicia. I wonder if Kingpin will worship evil gods. If he can deal with the hand, I think he should be willing. Chen Feng frowned and thought. I just don't know how Lawyer Ma is doing, whether he is okay now. Under Jin Bin's building is the secret dungeon. Lawyer Ma is now covered in scars and looks extremely miserable. Several of his guards were discussing outside the door. He watched the curse tape with those people. Why is he okay? Do you even need to ask? Another guard said disdainfully. Are you stupid? You can't see that he is blind. Another guard suddenly realized and said. So that's the case, no wonder. Lawyer Ma lay curled up in the dark and humid dungeon. He didn't know how the videotape appeared on his body, but these people seemed to be tortured by the videotape. Lawyer Ma couldn't help but become curious about what was on the videotape. But he was destined not to see it. The waves lap against the nameless black rocks. There were bursts of slapping sounds. The black reef took on a strange shape under the beating of the waves. The rugged rocks look like strange skeletons left by dead creatures. This reef is covered with various strange and weird cylindrical buildings and obelisk-like buildings. There are pictures on it that are indescribable, yet hideous, horrific patterns and words that cannot be described in human words. On the rocks, there are scars like ribs. Filled with all kinds of weird sea creatures, most of them rotting. It was like a ball of condensed gelatinous substance, emitting waves of stench. A large number of dark green skin deep divers are surrounding the largest cylindrical building among those cylindrical buildings. Making various weird or scary actions in an unsettling rhythm. Along with their weird movements, strange sounds full of profanity and filthy rhythms came out of their mouths. Like a harsh noise. It spread far and wide in the waves, even suppressing the sound of the waves. The deep divers are celebrating and praying to Cthulhu who sleeps in Relia. Father God Dagon returned from Innsmouth, bringing with him their compatriots and the mother goddess, Hydra. Natasha Romanoff felt uneasy. She had spent several days here, and none of the horrific mating rituals she had imagined had occurred. Dagon seemed to be waiting for something. This allows Natasha Romanoff's originally tense nerves to relax a little. Despite the stench of this forgotten site of horror, its grotesque obelisks and cylindrical buildings are covered in horrific and disgusting blasphemous paintings. The line drawings are twisted like a madman, carving out terrifying patterns that make people crazy. Natasha Romanoff is still fighting against Hydra's memory, and she still has control of her body. Dagon and the Deep Ones did not imprison her. She can move freely on land and in the sea without any hindrance. There were several opportunities for Natasha Romanoff to just walk out of here. Get off this disgusting reef of horrors. But in the end, Natasha Romanoff gave up. It's like there's something hidden under this reef, calling me. Thinking of the weird things that happened when he was about to leave. Natasha Romanoff felt cold all over. I am like an iron filing, attracted by the huge magnetic field in the deep sea. What exactly is under the ocean? Is it the sunken holy city of Relia? In the eternal mansion, the sleeping Cthulhu awaits you in your dreams. Under this black reef is the holy city, Relia. In this Relia is the sleeping god of dreams, Cthulhu. Even if he falls into a long sleep, he can still influence the world in his dreams. Even as he fell into eternal sleep, 
he still controlled Natasha Romanoff's spirit. Natasha Romanoff was in despair. I don't know what Dagon and those deep divers are waiting for. But as time goes by, I can perceive that the undecided day will eventually come. And with its arrival, I will also fall into an unspeakably terrible situation. I have to get out of here, I have to escape. But how should I break free from Cthulhu's mental hypnotic ability? Natasha Romanoff's heart was full of despair. She didn't know what to do or what to do. But if you do nothing, you can only face the arrival of the unknown in panic all day long. Or place all your hopes on your colleagues in S.H.I.E.L.D. Captain America, Hawkeye, did you find the Necronomicon in the ancestral home of the Delapur family? When can you rescue me from this hell? But now, Natasha Romanoff doesn't even know where this reef is in the Pacific. Is it surrounded by an area that is as undiscoverable as Innsmouth? But no matter what, Natasha Romanoff could never give up. The deep diver Father God, who was as shocked as the movement of a hill, moved towards Natasha Romanoff. The scary and dull face makes people shudder. A series of shrill, harsh yet rhythmic terrible noises were emitted. A part of Natasha Romanoff was resisting, but the memory belonging to Hydra was responding urgently. Tears streamed down half of Natasha Romanoff's face, while the other half showed a strange and disturbing smile. Hawkeye looked through the information in his hand, and all the information about Miskatonic University was on it. It's really strange for a university that regards occultism as its main subject. Mr. William Dale graduated here and also taught here. He immediately has a lot of industry giants. Quote. Then the drunken Delapur family, possibly the last descendant, was sent behind shield. Unable to wait for old Delapur to wake up, Hawkeye went to Miskatonic University with Nick Fury, Captain America, Rumlow and Daisy. Logically speaking, it's just a matter of going to the university and asking a few questions. There is no need for S.H.I.E.L.D. to send out so many people. But regarding those old gods, no matter what it is, we must be cautious. Never do it alone. Quote. Nick Fury seriously warned, we must be vigilant about Natasha Romanoff, as well as Stark. There are too many tragic cases, in the face of those unknown existences. Our common sense doesn't apply at all. So always proceed with caution. Quote. To prevent possible accidents, micro mushroom eggs are now even standard on Quinjet. And for the sake of prevention, someone loses control and goes crazy. The use of mushroom eggs requires the consent of at least three people, that is, more than half of the people in the team. This is to prevent one person from going crazy and causing a big problem for his companions. Quinn jet cuts through the clouds, and the scenery of Massachusetts is unobstructed from high in the sky. Miskatonic University is located in Arkham, Massachusetts. Quinn jet landed smoothly on the ground. It is only three or four hundred meters away from Miskatonic University. Although they just came here to ask some questions, everyone did not relax and scan the surrounding scenery vigilantly. Arkham Town is full of outstanding people and beautiful scenery. It is a beautiful town that can satisfy anyone's fantasy of natural scenery. The bounden duty of mankind is to have the courage to explore the truth. Captain America frowned and read out the motto on the door of Miskatonic University. This is an aphorism from Copernicus. He proposed the heliocentric theory. However, it was not Copernicus who was burned to death, but Bruno who promoted the heliocentric theory. Does this imply anything to everyone? Nobody knows. They set foot into Miskatonic University. You can see scattered students on campus wandering around the campus holding books. Students here walk together in twos and threes. I don't know what they are discussing, but their faces are sometimes happy, sometimes annoyed, and sometimes shocked. As if he was frightened by something. Hello, Nick Fury knocked on the door of the janitor's room at the entrance to the campus. There sat a man who looked somewhat strong. We are friends of Dr. William M. Dyer and would like to transfer his belongings to Professor Albert N. Wilma's. Nick Fury directly explained his purpose. The janitor seemed very surprised. Dr. William Dale. He's dead. Yes, we are his friends, and he entrusted us to deliver his relics to Professor Albert. Come with me, the old man said. Let me introduce myself. My name is Henry Armitage. Yes Miskatonic University Librarian. Since you are friends with Dr. William Dale, just call me Henry. Quote. 
Hello, my name is Nick Fury. Nick Fury introduced several people's names to Henry in a familiar manner. Hawkeye, Captain America, are you the ones who saved the Earth when the Chitori invaded it? Henry's face showed an expression of approval. Several people looked embarrassed. Compared with those indescribable and incomprehensible monsters, Chitori was like a docile sheep. But after hearing that Henry was the librarian, Nick Fury had some other ideas in his mind. Mr. Henry, can we visit the library? Definitely, Henry chatted and laughed with a few people, leading them to the depths of the campus. Occasionally, I met a few students on the way to say hello to Henry. We at Miskatonic University are open to anyone. Nick Fury smiled and nodded. That's great. William Dale, since he was recruited into the Antarctic Scientific Expedition Team from Miskatonic University, might also have left some information about the Antarctic Scientific Expedition. It would be great if you can find those materials in the library. Intuition tells Nick Fury that even if the information about the Antarctic Scientific Expedition Team cannot be found, you can definitely find surprising discoveries at Miskatonic University. This is it, Professor Albert is here, and he should still be in class now. Can you guys wait a moment? Henry said with a smile, Henry, who is wearing a monocle and wearing a suit and ties. He looks like a classic British butler. Definitely. Nick Fury nodded and asked again, we learned from Dr. William Dale that one of his students had some accidents and went crazy. We would like to visit him on behalf of Dr. William Dale. Do you know where the student is now? He's in Arkham Asylum. Henry sighed, before he went crazy, he was a very good student. Full of thirst for knowledge and curiosity to explore the truth, but too much curiosity is not a serious matter. This world is full of too much unknown and terror, just like Chidori. Were there no other visitors to Earth before the Chidori arrived? Perhaps before humans appeared on the Earth, there were beings from the other side of the starry sky. I visited the Earth. Quote. After saying that, Henry suddenly smiled and said, Sorry, it's just an occupational disease of mine. Please don't pay attention to my nonsense. Quote. At just the right time, the bell rang. The students walked out of the room, and Henry smiled. You can go in now. Albert was a thin, tall, gloomy man with classical round spectacles. In this weather, Albert still wore a red and white plaid knitted scarf. Dressed plainly and simply, he was clearing away the trivial items on the desk. He pushed up his glasses and asked, Henry, who are these? Henry sighed. They are here to tell you some bad news. Mr. William Dale has passed away, and he entrusted me to transfer his belongings to you. Nick Fury continued. 300 however, what is strange is that the look on Albert's face. There was no expression of regret or sadness. He just nodded and said with a normal expression, I know. Nick Fury frowned slightly, feeling a little strange. How could William Dell be just an ordinary friend if he could be entrusted to hand over the relics? Albert, however, didn't even show any sadness. Could it be that the relationship between the two of them is not as good as they imagined? Nick Fury pondered the strange relationship between the two in his mind. But Dr. William Dale's things were still handed over to Albert. Albert picked up the relics of Dr. William Dale and left without even checking them. Is he? Nick Fury asked strangely, the relationship between the two of them should be pretty good. Why? Henry scratched his head and said, Professor Albert became like this after he came back from Vermont. It seemed that he had encountered some kind of stimulus. He was originally a serious person, but after experiencing something unknown, he suddenly became more serious. Now more serious. Quote. Vermont. Nick Fury frowned, feeling a little uneasy. Albert's weird behavior is completely unreasonable. Even if he is unsmiling, he should die as his best friend. But he didn't even ask how he died. This feeling is like seeing a stranger. It seems that the reason for the change in Albert is right here in Vermont. I just don't know what happened to Albert. Let him face the death of his friend without smiling. Vermont and Massachusetts share a border, not far apart. But Vermont is not small. Who knows where Albert encountered strange things. Maybe I'm just worrying too much. Nick Fury sighed in his heart. The recent events about the old gods made Nick Fury's nerves tense. Maybe a little sensitive. It should have nothing to do with the old gods. Nick Fury thought to himself. Don't you want to visit the library of our university? Now is the right opportunity. 
Henry looked at the unknown watch in his hand and issued a polite invitation to everyone. Want to come visit? Definitely, Nick Fury said, curiously asking, we would like to ask. Dr. William Dale once organized a scientific expedition to Antarctica, right? Henry didn't think much, nodded and said, yes, that scientific examination caused heavy losses to the college. Seeing that Henry was not that resistant. Nick Fury thought he had a chance, so he continued to ask, do you know what happened? This is a school secret, I'm very sorry, I can't tell you. Henry said apologetically. Although Nick Fury was a little disappointed, he didn't say much. Please come with me. Under the leadership of Henry, everyone came to the most magnificent building in Miskatonic University. This is the library of Miskatonic University, where we have collected books from all over the world. There are many unique and rare copies among them, all of which are open to the public. Above the library is the museum of our Miskatonic University. It contains a collection of various commemorative items discovered by students and professors of our college during scientific expeditions around the world. However, due to some reasons, the museum is temporarily not open to everyone, I'm very sorry. Quote. Nick Fury nodded in understanding, why can't the museum be open to the public? Can you tell us why? This is also a secret on our campus. I'm very sorry. Everyone finally came to the library, where the decoration was magnificent. It looks more like a gorgeous palace than a library. Everyone, please, you can browse the books here as you like, but you can't take them away. Henry led everyone to explore the sea of books. All kinds of strange and even unheard of books come into view. This is. Nick Fury was surprised to see several books placed alone. One of them is actually labeled, Necronomicon. Shocked and stunned, Nick Fury couldn't imagine his eyes. This is an ancient book from Arabia, but the damage here is serious and the content is quite incomplete. Henry said with some regret, it has no reading value anymore. Nick Fury picked up the, Necronomicon, which was placed alone. As expected, the unknown leather pages in it were seriously damaged. There were a lot of damage, as if something had eaten it. Only one third of the most complete pages are preserved. The most surprising thing is that the pages of Inri's book are so badly chewed. The book cover is still intact, without any damage. It was as if those bookworms were chewing the pages in order to destroy the contents of the Necronomicon. But no matter what, this school actually knows about the existence of the Necronomicon. It was hard to know how to react. Hawkeye, Captain America and others all looked weird. Before Chen Feng told them, no one even knew about the existence of the Necronomicon. Even after searching all kinds of information, no traces left by the Book of the Dead were found. But now, in this unknown university, they actually found the Necronomicon. Although the pages have been severely chewed and have no reading value. But this meaning is extraordinary. Perhaps there are more amazing and even surprising terrible secrets hidden in this library. Nick Fury looked at Henry, the librarian with a smile, with a strange expression, and a strange idea came to his mind. Do the people in this school already know the old gods and even more terrible secrets? Are their goals for searching for the Necronomicon the same as mine? These questions popped up in Nick Fury's mind one by one. But Nick Fury didn't ask. Words can be deceiving. Nick Fury plans to verify his speculation in other ways. Everyone toured the entire Miskatonic University library like a quick tour, which took more than half an hour. This shows how big this library is. Came to a closed staircase. This is the road to the museum. I'm very sorry, I can't let you go up there. Henry said, and was about to lead everyone away. But Hawkeye's body trembled, looking at the closed corridor in horror. Captain America also widened his eyes in shock. Because before entering the museum on the stairs, there is a worn-out picture. Dusty handwritten poster. But the pattern on the poster is still clear. I don't know whose hand the handwritten poster came from. That ugly, terrifying and twisted face was full of weird and indescribable terrifying images. Vividly on paper. Those lines are twisting, like twisting earthworms. They fit together to form that terrible pattern. Dagon. Although Captain America and Hawkeye did not see the sculpture of Dagon, nor did they see the image of Dagon. But it is a horrific and ugly monster, full of evil and blasphemy. 
The depraved and frightening face is so similar to those disgusting Innsmouth monsters. Except for the top of his head, there are three strange light-emitting organs like angler fish. Just like those deep divers. Noticing the strange behavior of Hawkeye and Captain America, Nick Fury followed their gazes and looked over. Nick Fury has not seen the Deep One, but Nick Fury has seen it through Hawkeye and Captain America's dictation. A calligraphy and painting depicting the strange appearance of a deep diver. Excuse me, what is this? Nick Fury looked at Henry, and this school was not as simple as it seemed. Henry stroked his beard, thought for a moment, and then said, Oh, this is the handwritten newspaper made by the students during the last exhibition. It is related to an ocean legend called, The Deep Diver. They discovered the remains of a Deep One cult and found a sculpture that confirmed it. But before the exhibition began, the sculpture was lost. Quote. Where is that student? Can we go find him? Hawkeye asked hurriedly to some students who were pursuing the Deep Divers. They actually made a surprising discovery. Have they found the lair of those weird creatures? He has dropped out of school, left America, and is said to have gone home. Henry sighed. He is only 20 years old and very talented. It seems that he suffers from some kind of family inherited disease. The topic was not continued. Nick Fury felt that this school exuded a strange atmosphere everywhere. There is more to this school than meets the eye. Perhaps they have grasped the truth about the world. Maybe it's much more than that. Unearthing the secrets of Miskatonic University seems imminent. Don't be anxious, we still have a lot to do. Nick Fury raised his eyebrows, and they got the room and bed number of the mental hospital where William Dell students lived from Henry's mouth. Madman, how much information can be obtained from a madman? Nick Fury was prepared for disappointment. Let's go. Nick Fury arrived at the hospital and found an uninvited guest. Albert, still wearing a scarf, came to this mental hospital with the relics belonging to William Dale in his hand. What is he here for? Is he also visiting William Dale's students? Nick Fury mused. Hawkeye, follow him and see what he wants to do without being discovered by him. Understood. Hawkeye nodded and followed Albert. In Arkham Asylum, Nick Fury found the nurse and gave her bed number. The nurse took a few people to the room where the student William Dale lived. Before I even got to the room, there was a stench of feces coming from far away in the corridor. What's going on? Nick Fury said with a frown. The nurses seemed afraid that Nick Fury would accuse them of abusing patients. So he immediately explained, it's not that we abused him, but that he was a little, well, weird, I don't know how to describe it to you. In your eyes, mental patients are all very strange, but for him, I really don't know what words I should use to describe him other than weird. You will know after seeing it. Quote. After saying that, the nurse took out the key from her pocket and said, Danvers doesn't have a manic desire to attack, most of the time. He was very quiet. Quote. When the door was open, the strong stench of feces was nauseating. The walls, floor, and even the ceiling were smeared with feces. And Nick Fury is the person they are looking for. William Dale student. Just sit in front of the wall and, paint, it with feces and body fluids. There are layers of circles on the wall, like ripples caused by a series of rain falling into a pond. If you don't think about it, Danforth uses materials when he paints. If it's too disgusting, these layers of circles are arranged irregularly, giving them a different kind of strange beauty. Intimidating. That's it. The nurse covered her mouth and nose and said disgustingly. We tried, cleaning. But as soon as we wiped the feces off the walls, he would go crazy and beat everyone. Even if he uses sedatives, he will wake up quickly, and he can break free from the most powerful straitjacket for such a small person. Later, a scholar provided us with some money and asked us to arrange a private ward for him. Don't stop him, let him go as he pleases. We also tried providing him with pen and paper, but he seemed to like his own. The nurse didn't finish her words, but the meaning was already expressed. Nick Fury carefully observes the patterns in the room drawn with feces and bodily fluids. They are all round, with different file sizes, and are scattered in the room without rules. It was like a bubble wrapped around the entire room. Although mentally ill patients cannot think in the same way as ordinary people, their actions are logical. But they also have traces to follow, some actions or behaviors that ordinary people cannot understand. It may represent their inner struggle. But what did these things represent? 
Nick Fury studied the disorderly circles in the room. Quote dot 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 quote. I'll go in by myself, and you guys will wait for me outside. Quote. Daisy nodded quickly, she didn't want to go into this disgusting place. On the one hand, it's smelly, but it's also disgusting inside. Nick Fury stepped towards Danvers. Danforth concentrated on drawing pictures on the walls. He did not know how many times he spent drawing these pictures. His finger drew another circle on the spot where he had already drawn a circle. It exudes a strong stench of feces. Dr. William Dale, do you remember him? Nick Fury knelt down and said softly. Trying to use the name of Danvers's teacher, William Dale, to try to stimulate Danvers. But Danforth turned a deaf ear and continued drawing. Nick Fury thought, trying to figure out what he should ask. Finally, Nick Fury spoke. He asked directly, what did you see in Antarctica? Danvers stopped everything, his body was shaking, as if he was in some great fear. The distortion of his face. He stood up and his teeth collided, making a series of teeth searing friction sounds. His eyes were red and wide, and he screamed in obvious terror. Tigly. Tigly. A miserable wailing sound came from Danvers' mouth. He stood up suddenly and kicked over the bucket filled with feces and bodily fluids. Hands waving. Tagly. Tigly. Tigly. He opened his mouth and emitted a series of sharp flute sounds, like the flute sounds coming from the empty and distant silent wilderness. The sound in his mouth switched back and forth between, tiger, and the weird and terrifying horrifying flute sound. Harsh wails and strange flute sounds. There was such a strange harmony in his mouth. Ah. Come on. Tigerly. Tigerly. They are coming. No. No. Danvers covered his face nanos in horror, and the disgusting filthy liquid flowed down his face. Don't see it. I don't want to see it. Ah. Wisdom. Nirvana. The infinite unknown. Danvers was pressed down by a nurse while screaming and injected with a sedative. Danvers immediately calmed down and looked at Nick Fury with a silly smile. He murmured to himself, Tagly, Tigly, woo woo woo. The sedative gradually took effect, and Danvers closed his eyes and passed out. Ancient One Magician, after sending Thor off. The Ancient One has returned to Kamar Taj. Baron Mordo is waiting here for the arrival of the Ancient One. What's wrong, Modo Magician? Ancient One asked. After you left, we tried to look for anomalies in the world, and unexpectedly discovered a lot. Baron Mordo looked worried and said. A never-before-heard book called The Necronomicon appears on the black market. It seemed to record many unknown mysteries on the Earth and even the universe. Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., gave the book to a company in Hell's Kitchen called. The owner of Destiny Cafe, Chen Feng translates. Now someone is offering 1 billion USD on the black market to buy that book. The person who paid the money was Jin Bin, and Jin Bin encountered a series of strange events. It seems that only the Necronomicon can solve it. Quote. Baron Mordo took out a black videotape. The strange events they encountered came from this videotape full of resentment and curses. I took it over, although it was nowhere near what you see. But perhaps the appearance of the two indicates that something is about to happen. Quote. You have a heart. Ancient One nodded and took the videotape. Terrible resentment. What has the owner of this resentment experienced? Danvers' madness completely exceeded everyone's expectations. When it comes to Antarctic scientific research, Danvers is like boiling water. An extremely violent reaction occurred. Danvers was wrapped up in the terrible memory of the Antarctic scientific expedition, and was sadly unable to resist all this chaos. Under the influence of the sedative, Danvers fell into a deep sleep. Also because of Nick Fury's stimulation of Danvers, the nurse at Arkham Hospital was very dissatisfied. They declined Nick Fury's request to schedule a visit. Please leave here. Although Danvers is a madman, he has never been in such a crazy situation. I don't know what you did, what you wanted from a madman. But please leave. Quote. The nurse frowned and said, he was very dissatisfied with the performance of several people. Nick Fury had no choice but to leave, with him behind him. Captain America screamed like a wailing miserably. Those unclear meanings of, tiger. And felt a chill. Yeah, we don't know what they saw in Antarctica. But they must have seen the Shoggoths. The black gelatinous substance that boiled and rolled like melted asphalt exuded a disgusting smell. 
On its body, there are tens of thousands of swollen and pustular eyes, in the silent and empty night. Emitting a strange green light. Those terrible eyes twisted, constantly disintegrated and regenerated on the body. Like bubbles in boiling water. Those bubbles rose and burst, and more bubbles rose from the bottom of the kettle. There will be no end until the water is boiled dry. Quote. Captain America said that the terrifying shadow-like creature, which was bigger than trains and subways, seemed to appear in its mind again. Captain America then added, when it is moving, it always makes a weird sound like a, tiger. Now taking inspiration from Danvers, perhaps we can speculate. All Shoggoths make this weird cry of unknown meaning, Tigley. Nick Fury frowned, and things developed far beyond Nick Fury's expectations. Antarctica is more dangerous than Nick Fury imagined. But human exploration of the two poles has never stopped. Some people have also crossed Antarctica. The American government even established a stronghold in the center of Antarctica. On the vast land of Antarctica, there are more than 31 countries and one international organization. 76 scientific research stations were built on the Antarctic road. Why were they the only ones who saw the anomaly and encountered the Shoggoths? They must have done something unique, something that no other scientific expedition team has ever done. We can only see those things without knowing what they did, even if we go to Antarctica. Even if they travel every inch of the land, they may not be able to see what they see. Quote. The two survivors of Miskatonic University's Antarctic Scientific Expedition. Now William Dale is dead. Danvers has fallen into madness, and Nick Fury and others have been refused visits. We can only find another way, Rumlow said, if we can find their scientific research data in Antarctica. Maybe we can know what they did in Antarctica to encounter all that happened. Quote. It's not that easy, Nick Fury frowned. Even though Miskatonic University looks peaceful, I always feel like it's peaceful. There's something weird about that place, very weird. How could an ordinary school have a collection of the Necronomicon and Dagon sculptures? Perhaps Miskatonic University has mastered a lot of knowledge about the old days. It's just that it hasn't been made public. Before you have a thorough understanding of Miskatonic University, you must not make enemies with them. Maybe we still have a chance to cooperate. Quote. Beep. There was a soft sound. It was Nick Fury's communicator. It was a message from Hawkeye. Albert, we are heading towards where you are. Nick Fury put away his phone and frowned. Sure enough, Albert, who was in a hurry, was walking towards everyone with the relics belonging to William Dale in his arms. Why are you here? Albert's tone could not be said to be hostile. But he was not friendly either. He raised his eyebrows slightly and said with dissatisfaction. Are you the ones looking for Danvers? From what I heard, it seemed that the scholar who paid Danforth to stay in a separate ward was probably Albert. Hello, Nick Fury. Nick Fury introduced himself again, even if the other person's attitude was not friendly. But Nick Fury felt that he could get more information from Albert. We want to know some secrets from the past. Nick Fury hinted. Dr. William Dale told us we could ask Danvers. He is just a madman, what can he ask? Albert's tone was calm, but there was a hint of sarcasm on his face. Get out of here, go back to where you came from, and have a good sleep. We'll have to see it in Innsmouth, Nick Fury said suddenly. My men saw those terrible creatures in Innsmouth, monsters called Shoggoths. Another of my men was captured by Dagon, and we want to save her. You can't save her. Albert shook his head and said. No one can save us. What did you see in Vermont? Nick Fury asked in a low voice. We have encountered too many bizarre events. Yog sothoth the Great Mother, Cthulhu. Maybe we can have something in common. Nick Fury paused and continued. I have a translation of the Necronomicon in my hand, although the information on it is incomplete. But it still has reading value, maybe we can make an exchange. Hearing Nick Fury's words, a struggling expression appeared on Albert's face. He was thinking very carefully. No, you should destroy the, Necronomicon, from this world. It shouldn't be on Earth. Quote. After some extremely hard thinking, Albert still didn't reveal his secret. At this time, Nick Fury took out his ID from his pocket. We, the FBI, are investigating these bizarre incidents happening around the world. If you are unwilling to cooperate with us, I'm afraid we will have to take some special measures. 
Albert showed a rare look of panic. No, you don't understand at all. Those things hidden in the mountains and jungles must not be known to others. It cannot spread among human civilization, otherwise it will bring the threat of destruction to mankind. A threat to another civilization. Like the Chidori. Albert snapped and stopped Nick Fury who wanted to say something more. No, in their eyes, there is no difference between Chidori and us. They don't conquer the earth just because there is no need. They just want to get the minerals they want from the earth. As long as we ignore it and don't pay attention to it, we will be fine. Unlike the gods of old, we can get along with each other in peace. Quote. Them. Nick Fury asked keenly. Enough, I've said too much. Albert interrupted Nick Fury angrily. Leave here. Nick Fury frowned, hearing from Albert's words that those monsters were not native to the earth. They came to the earth just for the minerals on the earth, but they did not want to conquer the earth. As long as people on earth don't discover them, they don't threaten them and their mining work. You can live in such a muddle-headed way. Perhaps after the earth's mineral deposits disappear, they will leave the earth and never come back. Why? Why on earth? Nick Fury couldn't understand, conquering the earth. By turning the earth into their back garden, shouldn't those mineral deposits be left to their own devices to be collected? Why did they choose this extremely troublesome method? Nick Fury couldn't understand the way they thought. But what makes Nick Fury and everyone even more curious is that. Where did they come from? Are they the ancient ones? No one answered Nick Fury's question, and Albert avoided Nick Fury as if he was seeing a plague. Walk towards another location. Let's go. Nick Fury was not disappointed, he felt like a bee that had broken into a spider's web. I accidentally glimpsed the true and terrifying face of this world. He suddenly could understand the words William Dale left in the envelope. To me, the world is no longer the beautiful world with gentle wind, drizzle and bright sun. The more beautiful the world is, the more devastating the madness and death hidden in the tranquility are. Quote. Nick Fury opened his eyes, go to Vermont, those terrible creatures hidden in the mountains and jungles. Must have been discovered locally. Quote. Clear. Antarctica is too dangerous, although among all tasks, scientific research in Antarctica is definitely the highest priority task. Because Antarctica is not only home to those terrifying and twisted creatures, Shoggoths. In those white worlds covered by wind and snow, in the sparsely populated skies shrouded in ice crystal clouds, in the dreamlike auroras that fill the sky. Hidden is a terrifying ancient god. Yog. Sothoth. Before making complete preparations, for the sake of everyone's safety. Nick Fury had to slow down his plans to explore Antarctica without knowing what William Dale's expedition team had done. Only then can we see those 76 scientific research stations and countless terrifying scenes that have never been seen by scientific research teams. Maybe that place is like Innsmouth, isolated from the world. Maybe that place is in some kind of discontinuous space and time that cannot be observed by humans. If you don't know what William Dale's Antarctic expedition team did, then it may be difficult to find anything in Antarctica. You have to go to Antarctica, not just for Natasha Romanoff, but for the truth about the world. The unknown desire is like a fatal and tempting nightmare to everyone. Even if you know there are many dangers, you still have to try to fight for it. The professor named Albert looked at everyone and thought a lot. Finally, he sighed and said, if you really insist on going. Then prove to me that you have this ability first. I'm going to tell you some truths about the world. That's if you can sort out the trouble in Vermont. I must tell you, this is very dangerous. Some of you may die. Quote. Those creatures in Vermont that hide in the mountains and jungles. No, it's another kind of strange thing. Very dangerous in a sense. But it will not cause catastrophe to human civilization. Quote. Albert paused and said. In the west of Arkham City, there is a barren land where weird and twisted plants grow. No ordinary plant can grow there. There were people who wanted to set foot in that wilderness, but none of them came back in the end. What I am sure of is that the greatest danger in that place has left the earth and will never come back. The changes that occur on the earth are only changes caused by its growth. The wilderness originally belonged to a farmer, and now the farmer's family has disappeared. The horror of that place is not even remotely comparable to that of Antarctica. But if you can return safely from that place. Quote. Albert paused and continued. 
I am willing to give you some of the information that William Dale left during his scientific expedition in Antarctica, but those documents were incomplete, and most of them were burned by William Dale. So, you decide for yourself. Quote, it is hard to say what value the burned information will have. But after all, this is the last information left by William Dale. Even if there are only a few words. It's worth taking the risk. I can promise you, but I just want to ask. What kind of creature are you talking about that has already left the earth? Nick Fury said solemnly. Please tell us. It comes from the other side of the starry sky, bringing colors that are unrecognizable in this world, flowing like a broken rainbow. Perhaps, you can call it the color of stars. Quote. Albert rubbed his scarf uneasily, it is a creature that comes across the stars, a creature that cannot be understood by human thinking. Star color. Daisy muttered, it sounded like a very romantic name. Quote. Albert forced a smile from his cold and lifeless face. In nature, the more colorful a plant or animal is, the more dangerous it is. Maybe it's the same in the stars. After Albert left a place named for everyone, he left. Nick Fury looked at the note in his hand. Another creature across the stars, I thought it had been since the Chidori invaded the Earth. We began to officially contact the planet. Unexpectedly, not only do we not have the slightest understanding of the universe, but the Earth that originally belonged to us has now become so unfamiliar. When did this beautiful world start to look so strange? Nick Fury put the note in his pocket. In the valley west of Arkham, across that road, we can reach that weird place. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.